You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Hello and welcome to TV Guidance Counselor. As always, I am Ken Reed. I am your TV Guidance Counselor. And my guest this week is Samara Johnson, uh, professionally known as Sam J. Very funny comedian here in Boston. We did some shows at the Riot LA Comedy Festival a few months back. She is one of the newer comics here that I think is really great. I think you'll enjoy our conversation. She is very interesting. And I will see you at the end of the show. So please welcome my guest this week. Sam J. Welcome to the home. I'm excited. This is uh, it's a little messier than normal. But it's comfy uh, though. Is it comfy? Yeah. All right, as long as, yeah. as long as it's comfy. You trekked out to the suburbs for this. Yeah. It, took a train. Took a train and then a, a car ride. Which was a longer car ride than I expected. It was slightly longer, and I did make you wear a blindfold just so that you couldn't <laughs> lead people to this house. And I was also kind of nervous. I was like, oh, I don't know where I'm going. Like, where are we right now? Stoneham. This is Stoneham. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never been. I don't think I've ever been out here. I didn't realize it was that close to. Uh, Malden? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A lot of people don't, and we're hoping people continue not to see our house <laughs> values continue to be as high as they are. Uh, that's not true. But, uh, <laughs> so you picked it, you were kind of looking at the late 90s, but then you landed on the week of September 24th to the 30th, 1994. Yes. I, I thought it was that was good because my age, I was 12 at the time. Right. So I think I was like into a, a wide range of TV at this point. Yeah, and that's usually sort of people's sweet spot, as, as I was saying earlier. Right. Is that because you are you kind of want to be an adult, so you'll watch more like adult type things. Yeah. But then you also really sometimes secretly watch a lot of kids stuff as well. Right. And then my understanding of even the adult stuff was like not what I understand of it now. Right. Because right. I, my mind, you know, I just was, I was young. I didn't really know, but right. I knew it was like stuff. Yeah, something was going on. Yeah. And you also are sort of too young to go out and hang out with kids a lot at night. Exactly. That's but, why also I picked uh, September. I picked the fall because I was like, I'm, you know, pretty rigorous cool. schedule. Yeah. I got school, so I'm home. I'm actually watching TV. The summer I'm not really watching as much. You right. know what I mean? Well, there's not as much new stuff on either. It's, right. It's usually reruns. So I was like, so yeah. 12, this is what are you, time. sixth grade? 12, I am in the seventh. Is it seventh grade? Yes. I can never remember. Yes. Yeah, so 94, I was a freshman in high school. I'm two years older than you. So, yeah, it would have been seventh grade. Yeah, I was okay. in seventh grade. I went to Catholic school. Did it? Was the Catholic school like K through high school? Yep. Okay. It was one of those schools where we all know each other from, I started right. in first grade and Very went to school. With the same class. kids. Okay. And went to classes with the same kids until Did you have I graduated. In the school? No, I my brothers were way older than me. I have two brothers, but they're if like my brother's close to fifty and my other brother's like forty five. Okay. All right. So I was kind of a solo. It's probably good that they weren't in the school with you. Yeah. I would have said <laughs> very bad things about them. I was pretty solo. So full on all girls Catholic school? No, it was the high school was all girls, but okay. the K through um junior high was you know, co-ed. Junior high went to eighth grade? Yes. Okay, so you had two years left before you had to go all girls. Yeah, but then the cafeteria burned down. What? And <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. The cafeteria burned down because the, the high school kids were the only kids that had access to the cafeteria. Okay. Um, we don't have the cafeteria if it was like a pizza day or so something. So the buildings were connected? They were kind of. They were on okay. the same property but not connected. Okay. And the cafeteria was like in the middle of okay. the properties. And um, we would only get cafeteria time like if it was a big pizza day for like the whole eighth grade or How something would you, like that. When would you, where would you eat lunch? Otherwise? Oh, you had to bring your own lunch. Who would you just eat in the classroom? Yep, you'd eat at your desk. So, you know, you'd pull your lunch out your out That's your horrible. You had no lunchroom. No. I, that, we we ate in our classrooms. Sad. We ate in our classrooms from first grade till eighth grade. So you stayed in the classroom all day? Pretty much. We rotated to like two, three classes. Did you have a cloakroom? Yes, we did. <laughs> did they call it a cloakroom? They did. And yeah, that's always weird. One time, like, uh, I was in the coat room and I was going in my bag. 
and a roller, a sponge roller came out my bag. Yeah. But this girl said it was a tampon and I was in fifth grade and it made my fifth grade year terrible. Because the Catholics were like, you're not allowed to have a period. You're going to hell. And like all the kids were just <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God, yeah. Mario has a tampon. Because kids are horrific monsters. <laughs> so, I, like Kids are the worst people. And I was earth. like, I don't have a tampon. And it was just... Yeah. It made, it made fifth grade tough. It, so they never forgot it the whole year? No. You were just praying all year that someone would do something worse, worse than, than, than have that. a fake tampon in their bag. Right. Like someone would puke or, or poop their pants or something like something, that. Something, right? Yeah. We had a kid that uh, came into the cloakroom one day in kindergarten and projectile vomited completely just no one knew why just everywhere like bright pink whoa it looked like bright pink oatmeal whoa yeah the janitor was very unhappy yeah that's about crazy. the sawdust he had to put down on yeah. that thing it was very unpleasant that's, that's, that's so crazy. are you were you very religious no um i wasn't catholic which was a big deal <laughs> you know at catholic schools you can be catholic or you can be what they call like a lay person or like right. a non-catholic person right right and usually your tuition is higher because you're not a part of the parish, you're not a part of the church. Really? They'll yeah. charge you more? Our people are like, no, I'm really into it. Can I have a discount? Well, a lot of people go and send their kids to communion because they just don't want to pay right. the amount. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's but, um, crazy. Yeah, so I was a Catholic and I, I hadn't gone through communion or anything right. like that. But, um, I mean, you still have to learn. Like, you know, you still have to go to religion class. So you, right. you learn a bunch of this stuff. My mom wasn't very... Religious, like she saw you say, remember religion is right. the opiate of the masses. Right. She was one of those That's type of people. That's pretty progressive for your mother. <laughs> but it was just a better school than you would have right. to if you went to public school. Exactly. And it was cheaper than like a private, private right, school. Right, right. So it was like right in the middle, you know. Where'd you grow up again? Um, Dorchester. So you grew up in Dorchester. Yeah. Okay. As my mother did as well. Not the same year. Uh, <laughs> it was a little <laughs> earlier than that. Yeah, Catholic school always just terrified. All my uncles went to Catholic school. Actually, my, my mother's whole side of the family. And it uh, did not do them any good. It was a good experience. I, I feel like I was smart by the time I got to high school because it was crazy. Like, okay, so basically I was a terror in my school. Like, okay. They thought, at one point they told my mother I was possessed by the devil. Really? Yeah. Did they recommend um, an exorcism? They did because I used Hold to, on a second. Seriously. They actually recommended yeah, an exorcism? Yeah, they told her I needed to go see the priest and I needed to get an exorcism and then I needed to take communion because... Was that because you were left-handed? <laughs> no, it was because I was... <laughs> I was just... I used to just like to mess with them. Right. I wasn't really bad. Like, I didn't fight kids and stuff. Right. I just pushed their sensibilities a lot. Gotcha. Like, I would do stuff like... You'd question uh, their... Mo- question, their, uh, yeah. and uh, I would go into church, and I, when we would stick our head in the holy water, yep. I'd always act like it burnt me. Yes. And just stuff that... Well, that will lead someone to believe <laughs> you are possessed by the devil. Just stuff to, like... Yeah. And my mother used to like, will you just cut it out? Like, I know nothing's wrong with you, and I know you think this is funny. Right. But they really think, like, something's wrong with you. How did you resolve that? Um, it never really got resolved. Just kind of blew over? Yeah, they kind of just were like, there's nothing we can do with this kid. So you didn't take communion? So I didn't take communion, and they, they kind of, they, one time they tried to force communion on me at one mass. How would you force communion the on me? Two nuns held me, and the other one tried to, like, put it in my mouth. It was crazy. Two nuns held you, and yeah. nuns tried to put that cardboard styrofoam mm-hmm. awful crap in Because they mouth. said I was just, like, they really felt like I was possessed. Oh. But isn't, it, isn't it blasphemous if someone who hasn't gone through uh, whatever the first communion I guess crap they felt is, I was so far gone that, that I just needed anything. I just needed something. I, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy to me. I wonder if those women, the women who can't have children, maybe biologically, but at least by religion, who are probably the last people on earth that should be in charge of children, uh, really thought that. Like, I wonder if they really thought you were possessed by the devil. And they, that, they thought, like, uh, they, they thought something was wrong with me. I remember I asked the priest, because <laughs> we'd have religion, the priest would come in on Fridays yeah. in the religion class, and you could ask him any question you wanted. So I asked him... You could if, ask him any question you wanted that you were okay with having all the other kids hear you ask. Right. <laughs> right. So I asked if... Uh, if you are a man, a woman who got a sex change to be a man, right. could you then become a priest? Because only men can be priests. Right, right, right. And that wasn't received very well, and I got thrown out of religion class. What was the answer? He didn't answer me. He just he turned just really go? red. His name was Father Daly. He turned really oh, red. Father Daly. He turned really red, <laughs> and um, they asked me to leave. For good or just that day? Just for the rest of the day. I had to sit in the principal's office. Were you, so for people that don't know Sam, you are a lesbian. Yes. Uh, were you aware of that then? No, I really thought I liked boys. I okay. had a huge crush on Dylan from 90210. Okay. Um, Most lesbians I had a heart. Do. Yeah, I had a heart Dylan pillow. Okay. Um, so you weren't feeling like, because cause there's a lot of anti gay rhetoric. I had crushes in on girls, but I didn't know that that's what was happening. Right, right. I just thought these girls are really cool and I like being around them and like, 
I remember like I had a friend, Kimberly Lydon. I would like color her like pictures, right. you know, and she'd be like, oh, your coloring is getting so much better. And I yeah. just like liked her. Yeah. And I look back and I'm like, I totally yeah, liked her. her. Yeah, you but like liked her. Yeah, but when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, she's <laughs> awesome, you know? Do you think that the reason I bring it up is because I wonder if the nuns who probably were also some lesbians mixed in there <laughs> uh, kind of picked up on that and that was what they were thinking was you were possessed you know I don't, oh, maybe I don't know maybe what if you weren't really manifesting that till later I don't think I was They were, and they were just really like evil old ladies like they were really like yeah. spiteful and just angry and stuff because we had a teacher Ms. wait nuns? Yeah, right we had a teacher Miss Stanziani and um, she an was an Italian a, nun? she was a lay she was a lay woman so, so oh, okay. you could work at the school too if yeah. you weren't Catholic but they had separate rules for you. Lay woman sounds like something a nun would call a <laughs> prostitute. Basically, that's how they treated her. Because yeah. she was really, really pretty. And she was tall. And she had, like, perfect olive skin. Right. And sometimes she'd wear a tennis skirt. Because on Wednesdays, she played tennis with her fiancé. Okay. So she'd wear her tennis stuff to school. I like it. Which I don't really think is appropriate. No. But it was really hot. But I'd watch and that show. I totally had a crush on her. Yeah. And I would buy her, like, the best gifts on, um, like, bring a gift to your teacher day. What would you get teacher it? appreciation. One time I got her a letter, like, a book um, page holder yep. that was like gold plated with her name that's Stanziani jeez what did she how yeah. did she receive that she would just be like oh you're so sweet thank you and I'd just be like oh yay yeah, yeah. we were like I'm totally in I was in love with her yeah totally so did you go to the Catholic high school no what happened that's, that's where I was getting with this so by the time I get to 8th grade I have a reputation in the Catholic schools of Boston of just being like this terror. So your name's on a list in the archdiocese yes of like she is a terror of yeah. a kid so I couldn't go to my girls' schools because it had burnt down. Right. So I went to St. Clair's, which I think was in Rosendale somewhere okay. at the time. And I was going through the open house of St. Clair's. And Clare's. Rosendale is, for people not in the Boston area, is sort of like um, a transitional city between like Dorchester, Roxbury. And Dedham. And, and into the suburbs. Yeah. It's like the middle city. Right. Yeah. So I go to Rosendale, and um, I'm going to the St. Clair's open house, and you know, you're going to a different classroom, seeing two teachers, what? Right. And I get to this uh, history class, and this nun is like, you're Samaria Johnson, aren't you? And I was like, yes. And she was like, Miss Stacy has told me all about you, and I'm waiting to get you. I can't wait to break you. And so... That's like a prison movie. It was crazy. And so my mom, I told my mom, right. and my mom was like, I'm not doing this for another four years. Yeah, it's just going to get worse. Like, this is just ridiculous. And she sent me away to Stoughton High School. So okay. I, my mom moved, I moved out to Stoughton and stayed with my cousin. And my mom was getting ill at the time anyway. So I right. moved out to Stoughton and stayed with my cousin, and I went to Stoughton High. And Stoughton's pretty far. I mean, yeah. that's that's probably 40 minutes from Boston. Yeah. Very, not even just suburban. It's almost kind of rural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it does have a strip club. It does. One, <laughs> one very bad strip club. Is it Alex's? Alex's. Alex's and it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's really bad. I remember we, when I was in a punk rock band in high school, we used to always end up weirdly playing shows in Stoughton at, like, VFW halls. And we played a show in this, like, abandoned hotel down there. Uh, and you'd always drive by Alex's night. Uh, a gentleman's club or whatever yeah, it was and they had like a buffet have oh, you been there? yeah no it's disgusting it's I can the, imagine it's the only strip club I've ever been in where I've, I've looked away like I didn't want to look right. and I was just like I don't want to be here just just like hideous it was people just, yeah just gross you go to strip clubs often? I do actually really? <laughs> Really? Actually, yeah, I do. But not, mean, in, not here so much. But when I was living in Atlanta, yeah, I did go to strip clubs a lot. Inadvertently? Um, no, I really just love strip clubs. <laughs> just they're great clubs. places to be. And in Atlanta, they're really like a social scene more. Like girls right. go, guys go, there's pool. Oh, wait, you mean hot Atlanta? Yeah. There's pool, <laughs> you know. So, so it's, it's just like, hanging out at a bar that happens to be naked people. Right. Yeah. I've only been once, and it was like two years ago, and I was doing the Bridgetown Comedy Festival. And apparently uh, Portland is like the most strip clubs per capita out of any wow. place in the world or something so they did like a comedian's strip club crawl and i got talked into going to one of them and i was just very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. <laughs> i, I would imagine not you know not knocking you but you don't strike me as a strip club type of guy no i'm not it's, i would imagine i, mean, I don't have a mustache comfortable. yeah yeah I'd no, imagine not my thing you not wouldn't my like thing. that uh, yeah, so Alex's is what Stoughton is known for. Did kids in the high school talk about Alex's a lot? Yeah, they did. Like, yeah. some kids, like, try to sneak in and stuff because, you know, people want to see boobs, especially right. young boys. In the but... pre-widespread internet age. <laughs> exactly. Did you go to college? Yes, I did. Where'd you go? I went to Clark Atlanta University, and then I left there, and I went to a community college in Georgia called Barter College, which was, like, a terrible place. That Why did no you head down south? Well, my my brother was down there. Okay. I always wanted to go to Georgia, 
my mom had passed away when I was 16. Right. I was just kind of want to get out of here. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, I just want to get out of here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I went down south because that's where everybody was going right. when I was graduating from high school. It was like, if you were young and you were black and you had any, like, ambition, you were going to, like, Georgia because Atlanta was Is just... Is there a lot going on there? Yeah, Atlanta was just, like, where it's at. Especially for uh, young black kids. There's a lot of upward mobility. Like, okay. a lot of my friends, had, you know, opened up their own stores, had okay. fashion lines. We're just There was just a lot of stuff going yeah. Yeah, so that's a world I know nothing about. So it was like, all right, this is where you go. You that know? was like the Williamsburg for black kids. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. I see. Exactly. I see. So I went down there and I, I got into Clark and I was there for like, I don't even, I can't even really say I went there because I was there for like maybe three months and I didn't really go to any classes and I couldn't afford to stay in school. Right. Like some freaky stuff happened with my brother and my money and it was just crazy right. mostly probably due to demons or devil possession exactly right so i ended up uh going to a catholic school i mean a um community, community college that was underneath a lord and taylor in a mall in a mall in phipps plaza so it's right next to like a lords and ladies hair salon <laughs> and like, like the, the, yeah the it was photo like, place literally you had to go through you could go through the lord and taylor to get to it you go down the escalator to the basement of the lord and taylor and you could walk oh out this God. door and there was like a school under there there's a community college underneath the department store yes that sounds like my dream and i love a department store love them and if i could have gone to college in a department store yeah i would have had a lot it more was fun. terrible it was a bad idea did you finish no i just drank a lot and partied too much yeah. and like i don't really think i ever wanted to go to college i think i just wanted to get you felt like you, you, wanted, to get, you wanted an excuse to get out of boston yeah but also i think that it feels like you have to go like there's a lot of prejudice. yeah if you don't it was a, a huge thing of like you have to go and like this is what your mother would have wanted you to do right. and all of that stuff, but I don't really ever think it was for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you moved back here. Yeah, I moved back here. Uh, I want to say four years ago now. Four okay. or five. Yeah, years I think ago. that's where I went. Yeah, you. four years about ago. Four years ago. Mm -hmm. And you just started doing stand up when you moved back here. Yeah. Okay. I had I had been exposed to stand up before. Uh, um, I had a uh, Chris Tab was married well is married to my cousin okay so he kind of boston comedian yeah so when i first was like i always kind of wanted to do it but i don't know around 20 i was like i really want to do this right so i linked up with him and he kind of brought me around and i did dicks when it was you know and by emerson yeah i did it like twice and i was just terrible at it or at least i felt terrible at it people told me i wasn't but well, that means you're good. If you feel bad at it, I the just people was like, who are like, do it one time, and they're like, I'm probably the best. <laughs> so usually the worst. I was like, I'm so because I I think I had in my mind what I knew a good stand up was, right? And I was just like, I am a million years away. This from... was you were always kind of a wise ass, right? At school and stuff, so it was kind of made sense. So I was just like, oh, this is I'm bad, and I always just loved comedy. I always was like a study of right, comedy, right, right. um, inadvertently. So. I was just like, this sucks, you know? And I think it was just like, I knew I didn't really have a, a voice or an identity right. Right. or anything. Because I'm 20 yeah. and I'm still like even dating guys. Like, I have no idea who I am at right, this point. Right, right, right. I'm just figuring stuff out. So in the midst of all that, you know, I moved to go away to school. Right. Because I stayed for a year after I graduated. So I moved to go away to school and then I'm just like, you know, it kind of goes to the back burner yeah, of my yeah, mind. Yeah. But you have yeah. a lot more going on. Right. Yeah. But every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I remember that. And it was right. cool. And I would like to try that again. Right. And um, I went through a lot of different career paths, you can say. Like, I was doing promotion and club stuff and music stuff. But it was always kind of in the entertainment field. Right. But it felt like I was always, like, behind the scenes trying to help someone else achieve right. their mm -hmm. dream what music or stuff goal. Uh, I was doing managing. Really? Uh, of an artist. and This is in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, we almost got a deal, like most people. But it was cool. Like, I met a lot of people. Like, I met T.I. I met tons of people. I was Jeezy. I was, like, in and out of studios None a of lot. These names mean anything Killer Mike. Uh, <laughs> you could be making up names, and I would, I would be like, oh, yeah, so, okay. So, it was neat. It was yeah. really neat experience, and I think it, it definitely helped me in my stand-up career. Like, yeah, oh, I'm sure. It definitely gave me a lot of You can tools, apply some. some tons of to stuff. It. So, uh, when I came back home, I was just like, you know, I'm tired of just not doing what makes me happy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. being afraid i think that's really the biggest thing was just a fear thing of like because i really wanted to do it you know yeah. what i mean i remember uh i was hanging out with this girl and um she was just like what do you want to be you know and that's a weird question and uh i was like a comedian yeah. you know yeah. and she was like are you serious because like in atlanta no one ever thought like i was really quiet right and you know I'm, i'd say funny things here and there but Mostly I'm just chill and quiet. Right. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, that's what I want to do. And she was like, why aren't you doing it? And I was like, because I think I'm going to be good at it. 
yeah. which was the first time I was really honest about what was making me afraid. Because it was like once I did it, that I had to do you it. Kind of stuck doing it. Yeah, yeah, and I've had like I have huge commitment issues in general, just right. from being young and moved around a lot. And yeah, like, yeah. Stuff. So you don't want to go on a path. Right. I'm but like, you, you <laughs> haven't found that path yet in 1994. <laughs> no. But 1994. Were you, were you 12? thinking about wanting to do that stuff? How many I was. I was thinking about. Kind of secretly. Secretly, like, how could I have a job just being funny? Like, I always knew, like, I was funny. So, not even being cocky, but, like, I knew, like, I knew how to make people laugh. Like, yeah. I knew how to tell a story and embellish enough of it. And for people who can't see Sam right now, she is wearing, like, a Groucho Marx glasses and mustache combo. <laughs> it's really funny. It's. <laughs> So I, I did, but I didn't know it was like a real thing. You know, I didn't yeah. know it could be anything. Right, right, You know, right, right. it's like right. my parents were, you know, very would, regular people. Like, Would I'm, you watch stand up on TV? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you guys had cable? Yes. Okay. Yes. And since your brothers aren't in the house, you kind of had free reign of the television. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I had cable in my room. Oh, okay. I had a TV that's, and cable in my that's room. That's everything. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I had pretty free TV time. So on Saturday night, let's jump in. Uh, yeah. What did you watch at 8 o'clock on Saturday, September 24th? Clarissa explains it all. So you were a snake person. I was definitely a snake person. I was big on... Um, I liked Nickelodeon because it was, like, cool. It was cool programming geared towards kids, but it was smart. Yeah. Yeah. It was smart, and it was engaging. It definitely was, not at that time especially, this was, was sort of the tail end of it, but Nickelodeon had, an adi- like, an anti-adult attitude. Right. And it was very much like, uh, yeah, it's kids doing stuff. Yeah, and, it's, it's we, not and we can like do that. cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, kids yeah. can do cool things. Yeah, their rules are bold. We right. Can, and and it, <laughs> it sounds silly now. Exactly. Uh, but it was, oh, it was, it was awesome. kind of revolutionary at the time, no, and it there was, was great. never anything like that. It was like MTV but for like kids it was great yeah, it was like and, was, and it had it had the news and like oh yeah Melinda Ellerby and, and like and that stuff was great and yeah. it didn't talk down to kids there was no some excellent stuff. it was great so stuff, Clarissa so. this episode is best friend Sam and Clarissa play the dating game this is the one where they try to get together Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah doesn't yeah, work yeah. out. No, because that's not how friends are supposed to be. They shouldn't. They should. They shouldn't be hooking yeah. up. Uh, I, I generally would have watched Clarissa at this time uh, when I was 14. So, so Snick started in 92 when I was 12, and I usually watched it. But by 94, I was kind of aging out of that uh, sort of world. Well, on a Saturday, I'm typically watching Nickelodeon all day. Yeah. So it's just flowing just don't into the it. Channel. Yeah, like I'm yeah. watching Guts, I'm watching Legends of the Hidden Temple, right. I'm watching Dublin. So you're just so I'm really there. just watching Nickelodeon all yeah, day. Anyway. I think that's fair. Uh, I probably would have watched <laughs> Cops because I've watched Cops every Saturday night to this day. See, it was like a back and forth for me. Like sometimes I would. Like if I was if I came out my room and I was watching TV with my parents, yeah. I'd watch Cops because yeah. they watch Cops. Yeah. But I was like, nah, if I'm in my room just in my me time, I'm going to yeah, watch, watch Clarissa. Uh, or I would have been possibly on WPIX watching They Live, the John Carpenter movie starring Rowdy Roddy Piper from the Williams. <laughs> You've never seen it? No. Oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> TV Guide only gives it two stars, sadly. But this is John Carpenter's dark parable about aliens disguised as yuppies. It stars Keith David, Roddy Piper, has the longest fight scene on film to this day. I might have uh, to check that oh, out. Oh, you, you would love I like Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper's great. Keith David's great. Uh, it, it's a really good movie. They Live. It's very anti-Reagan. Yeah, All right, I gotta really. check that out. Uh, so eight thirty, would you go with Pete and Pete? Maybe my favorite show Nickelodeon ever did. Great, yeah, great it's... show, great writing. Um, the Mister Frosty episode is my favorite. Yes, what we did on our summer vacation that episode was the, the of sort of pers- for the pilot episode for the series in a lot of ways. It was yeah, the first special. It was so good. That was such a great show. Uh, it doesn't say which episode it is this evening. A family. This is a great one. Okay, a family feud erupts when Mister Hickle, who is played by Steve Buscemi, mm-hmm. you remember, uh, bounces radio frequencies off the metal plate in Mom Wrigley's head. Uh, this is a really weird one. Uh, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> I mean, Steve Buscemi's on a kid. Show. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I don't think I remember that specific episode, but um, I was huge into Pete and Pete. I just really enjoyed. It. I just enjoyed Nickelodeon. So I here's a question great. for you from a, um, a sort of a race perspective. Mm-hmm. There was a, a, a writer of Nickelodeon, a book about Nickelodeon, who got in some trouble recently because he complained about how ethnic Nickelodeon is now and was complaining about it, which mm-hmm. I think is off base. But um, at this time especially, it, it's all white kids on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Did you find that alienating at all? Or, or um, did it matter? You know what? No. I, like, I don't know. It was... To me, TV was like part fantasy anyway. Yeah, stories. So stories. it was always good to like see 
lives that I wasn't necessarily living, you right, know, like right. exposing me to stuff that wasn't necessarily my day to day. So it's escapism a bit. A bit of escapism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I'd watch like, you know, Saved by the Bell and it's like, oh, I'd be cool as hell to be yeah. like Zach Morris or like, yeah. you know, this would be cool. And like, so it, it not really because then it's like when I wanted to do like my black thing, I would just like watch Fox or something. <laughs> Every <laughs> show on Fox. <laughs> Fox is should have just said Fox. It's a black thing. Yeah, yeah I think that's fair. Um, you know, I always wondered about that because, you know, I take for granted growing up where, you know, the majority of kids on TV and uh, at least when I was growing up, when we were growing up, were probably more my race. Right. Uh, so I always wondered. And I had, I had like well-rounded experiences too. Like I would watch Lucha Shorts, but I went away to overnight camp. So it was right. like, you know, you can still relate. See, and I'd never been to overnight You can camp. still relate. Yeah, I've levels. never done that. And like, I, yeah. The only show I didn't really get was probably like, Hey Dude. I was just like, was I hated Hey white. Dude. Yeah. I didn't like Hey Dude very much much either i hated he dude yeah i don't think that was a race thing i think that was just no it was just terrible it wasn't a race thing it was a taste thing <laughs> i'm gonna get a shirt that says that uh nine o'clock you sticking with nick no nine o'clock i'm leaving my room to go into the room with my parents and i'm watching america's most wanted so this was a family thing you guys watched together. yeah like we just watched america's most wanted i mostly would be scared out of my mind because i just right. I, I was one of these like sensationalism works was well that, on me. Was that the only show you watched with your parents? No, we used to watch like America's Most Wanted. Um, I used to watch like Frasier with my mom sometimes. Oh, that's weird. Uh, she was into like she really liked Kelsey Grammer a lot. Yeah. Like she was a big Cheers fan. Well, I loved him on Cheers, and I hated yeah. Frasier. She was a big Cheers fan, so it was like whatever you yeah. know happened after that. She was with it. Right, right. So I'd watch like that kind of stuff with my mom right. sometimes, and like Jeopardy, of course, like yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that with my mom. And um, Star Trek. She was a huge Trekkie. Original series or Next Generation? Both. Oh, cool. She was into both. And I never understood any of the three shows. Right. But I would just... You'd watch it anyway? Because I was paying on my mom. you guys do together. Yeah. yeah. So did you ever see anyone you thought you knew on America's Most Wanted? No. I okay. ne- it never got that serious for okay. me. But I just... It, like, the stories would just, like, haunt my mind. Well, yeah, it's terrifying. Because it's, yeah. it's not even, like, aliens and stuff. It's real people committing right. real crimes. And then my mom told me, like, John Walsh's real backstory. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. son. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, that's... It was too much. For yeah, mine. that is a little too much. Yeah, I so, I would not watch it for those very reasons <laughs> if I could avoid it. <laughs> like it was scary. Yeah, no, it's a scary show. And I would like split between that and uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like I'd watch half which of the most scary. Morning, which also scared the crap out of me though. So we, are you just generally easily spooked? Yes, like, I you're am. Just scared of I, all kinds I, of things. I, and and I have a crazy imagination. So you don't watch horror movies or anything like that. I don't. So this episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark is a young woman strikes up a friendship with a strange new neighbor. I don't remember that episode specifically, but I would occasionally watch that. And again, uh, you know, it's 19, uh, 1994. I'm, I'm still kind of aged out of yeah. uh, the Snick thing. But uh, they were airing a Saturday Night Live marathon on uh, Comedy Central. And at this time in the 94, early 90s, they pretty much aired the episodes from my favorite era of Saturday Night Live, which was like 85 mm-hmm. to 89, 90-ish. And so I definitely probably would have been watching that at mm. the time. Uh, I will mention that Halloween 3 was on, though, at uh, 9 o'clock, and I'm a huge, huge horror movie fan. So I definitely would watch those. I uh, also want to mention at 10 o'clock, the show Sisters was on, which I watched every damn week. Who was... I was... I Seal saw Seal Ward that. was the big uh, actress on Okay, because I was yeah. like, I don't even... Swoozy Kurtz was show. on it. It was it was sort of uh, an update of like thirty something. It was like suburban middle class white women that are sisters that have problems and mm. has cancer and someone's mm. having an affair. Yeah, so that's and, adult stuff. You know that kind of stuff. That's yeah. heavy stuff. I probably wasn't yeah. getting into that. I watched that stuff all the time. I used to watch thirty something when I was eight or not. I don't know why I watched <laughs> those things. I have no idea why I watched those things. Sunday night eight o'clock. Would you go with? The Simpsons. Okay. Were you a diehard Simpsons fan? Yes. Yes. I had the uh, Simpsons Sings the Blues Ah, tape. do the Bartman. Uh, my favorite song was Look at All These Idiots with Mr. Burns on right, it. Right. It was great. Um, did you I have just a Simpsons, Simpsons shirt? I did. I had a Bartman shirt. I had a black Bart Simpson. Black Bart. Shirt. The blue I legs. had a black Bart cake for my birthday that year. Where'd you get the black Bart shirt? Um... It was like some local store in my neighborhood yeah, yeah, yeah. had a bunch of different. They were ones. everywhere. Every yeah. convenience store. Yeah, other than it was there like some those. Yeah. It was yeah. those and the and the hip hop Looney Tunes. Yeah, shows. I had that shirt, and yeah. I, I've been looking for one on eBay in my size because I feel like that needs to be resurrected. They they can go for kind of a lot of money these days. Yeah, yeah. I we used to go to the flea markets all the time as a kid, and 
And that time, especially, we'd go to this one in Revere that was in the parking lot of the Revere Cinemas. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they had a whole aisle of just, like, black Bart Simpson group <laughs> like memorabilia. And then all hip-hop uh, Looney Tunes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. whatever you needed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or the so. Corner Mall uh, in downtown. Oh, yeah, Crossing. downtown. Yeah, yep, you yep. get the, the picture there, too. With the uh, with the brick behind, oh yeah, 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 different like airbrushed yeah. Uh, motifs. Yeah. I still like the corner mall in downtown. <laughs> like if you in Boston, if you go to downtown Crossing, it's sort of been revitalized a little bit now. But that place after five o'clock would be a ghost town. Yeah, no people would be down there. Yeah, because it's like a business district. Right, and it, everything closes early downtown. But the corner mall was not really a mall. It was basically like a. Like a food court. Yeah, That's it. and two stores. Yeah, and it was ridiculously 80s. And it's still the same. It's exactly the same. Yep. And it was the only thing open down there past 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I think there used to be like a chess king in there maybe. Yeah. Or like a merry-go-round. Yeah, there was. Yeah. There was one around the corner. It was yeah. right around the corner for Corner Mall right next to it. There yeah. was a merry-go-round. My and uncle used to work in there. At the merry-go-round? Yeah. Oh, wow. He used to get us like jeans, like silk colored shirts. jeans and yeah. silk shirts. Good cross colors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. Yeah, I used to live up because it's all glass bricks and neon. And it's then he went from Mary go to JW to Jeans West. Okay. Would you still get jeans at that point? Yeah. Still get colored jeans. Nice. Red, turquoise. Nice. What was your favorite colored jeans? Turquoise. The turquoise. Yeah. I like I like loud stuff. Yeah. Well, we all do. Was, we all do. You know, that's about the color. Doing the Bart, man. So, yeah. The Simpsons was a great show. I watched this pretty much every week on Sunday nights yeah. as well. Uh, I kind of checked out around the early 2000s, but by 94, I was definitely into The Simpsons. And this one is a romantic novel, inspires Marge's family discussion of love, but the stories told, seen in flashback, all seem to end in heartbreak. This is the one that tells like how Homer and uh, oh, Marge, Marge got met. together. Yeah, 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 okay. This is a very good one. That was a good one. That was yeah, cute. I enjoyed that one very much. Uh, 8.30, what are you going with? Real World. The Real World 94, Real world. which is the Boston cast, I From believe. the beginning to the end, I was a Real World fan until maybe, like, 2000. Yeah, 2000, I checked out of the Real World, absolutely. Because, uh, yeah, die this, hard. 94, I believe, and it doesn't state in here, but I'm pretty sure that's the Boston cast. I, that's because I wanted to Google it. Before, like, I meant to Google it before we started. So, this, let's see. 90, I wanted to know. I think 9091 was New York. Who was? Uh, 92 is uh, L.A., New York was great. Okay. 93 was San Francisco. You know what? 94 was London. Yeah, okay. That's what I was to say. London. I feel like it yeah, was... Uh... She's Googling that. But I, this is my memory. Let's see how correct I was. I think 94 was London. 95 was Boston. 96 was San Diego. Not San Diego. Miami. 96 was Miami. And then I think 97 was Seattle. Seattle, This is yeah. information that would be of use to no one. <laughs> This will never come up. No one will ever ask me to list. Seattle was my favorite. Tons. One of my favorites. With David? Yes. Yeah. With David and um, with the guy who smacked the chick. Oh, yeah. Um, the girl with Lyme disease. Oh, it's San, San Francisco. San yeah. Francisco. Was, I was about to say, I don't think it was London because I didn't watch London. San Francisco was not 94. That's what the, that's what the people are saying. Why are you saying that? I'm looking at it. MTV. No. World, World San Francisco. 93 would have been San Francisco. David Puck Rainey. 94? They're saying San Francisco. What year Francisco? is it saying it was London? Let's look. This is riveting to people. This is crazy. Like yeah, this is... Because I have a lot to say about San Francisco. I didn't like the San Francisco one. I loved it. Was it your favorite one? No, but it was up there. Um... 95. 95 was London. 95. All right, so I mean, you're off. Yeah. So we're in San Francisco then in the real world. Yes, yeah, San Francisco, real world. Awesome. Let's talk about it. I Puck was the man. You liked him? I loved Puck. I didn't appreciate them kicking him out the house. See, he was everything I hated in a human being. I loved everything about Puck. He and reminded me of people I knew and I didn't like I didn't. Maybe I... <laughs> see, this might get back into the like fantasy. Maybe because yeah. I didn't know anyone like that. I was just like so like yeah. captivated by how disgusting he was. Yeah. And how he didn't see like anything wrong with it. Right, right, right. And um, I, I think it made for great fun in the house as far as dynamics go. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason that I sort of had an aversion to the to the San Francisco cast, and in, in hindsight, I would easily watch it if you had a cast of people like that now, because now the show's just like dumb, right. hot people fighting and right. having sex These with These are like other. dynamic people. But the, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a true mixture of people from all different backgrounds, and it was kind of what the point of that show was. This is around the time, though, with the real world where I hated the black person all oh, the time. Oh, he was a total they, wet blanket, boring. Yeah, it was that guy with the dreadlock yeah, awful band, but they right? kept getting black people like that. Yeah. And it was just like, can you get like an engaging black person, please? Yeah. Well, like, no, Heather B in season one is great. Heather B is great. Who right? doesn't like Heather B? Heather B was great. I thought they kicked David out too quick for me to even well, give a shit about Well, he did him. assault Tammy. Oh my God, no, he did it. Yeah, and that makes me so angry. I know he didn't. <laughs> my favorite Tammy quote, it wasn't not funny. <laughs> 
The double negative that she didn't even know. I did love Tammy though. I liked I Tammy, Tammy, but oh my god, I hated Beth. And I just yeah. felt like Beth perpetuated that Beth whole S? situation. Yeah. And or Beth L. Um There's two Beths. The terrible Beth. Okay. The yeah. fat I think one. That's Beth S, yeah. Beth L was the lesbian that yeah, came yeah, replaced, yeah, no. yeah. Hate Beth. Yeah. She perpetuated that whole situation. Oh yeah, that was she's, Beth. She's yeah, a she's, sister. She's yeah, yeah, and then that whack cop came, like, you gotta get out of here. Yeah. And it just pissed me off. Or there was a the time though that David flipped out on, on John Brennan for not cleaning up his styrofoam. Yeah, I remember that. His styrofoam! <laughs> Clean it up! <laughs> I do remember yeah, that. while he was putting his rollerblades on. <laughs> But I like this one. The, the cast on this one, you know what I think I like, Buck? Mohammed was the was Yeah, the Mohammed he, was he terrible. Was so boring. Oh he was God. the most boring person. I was so happy when New Orleans came and they got David because I was like, at least David yeah. is interesting, you know? But uh, I think I like this one because Puck. I like Puck because everyone else was so boring now that I'm looking at them. Yeah, you had Everybody Rachel, was boring. You had Rachel, Rachel, the Hispanic Republican. Boring. He was very boring. Mohammed, boring. Judd Winnick was boring, although Judd, I like him yeah. now. He writes comics now. He's much yeah, more yeah. interesting. Yeah, but he was boring then. Yeah. And Puck was boring. I mean, not Puck. Um, Pedro was boring, boring. But his story was interesting. But it really wasn't. It was just like, okay, it's San Francisco I and think, you're gay yeah, but and I you think, have AIDS. And then he had a whack boyfriend. Sean did. was very yeah. Sean But was here's very the thing, though. I just wasn't. I just like Puck. I at the time, Puck. that was interesting. Though. And I didn't like how they kicked him off via voicemail. Well, fair enough. But at the time, there were there was no one with AIDS on television. This is true. I mean, I mean that was it was groundbreaking. Yeah. But he him as a person, I was so bored by him. Yeah. No, I he wasn't <laughs> like, the most dynamic. Person. I was just like, was, oh my yeah, god, he's so that. boring. But I think that the we can't discount. It's hard to put ourselves in that mindset from twenty years yeah. ago. How crazy it was to see a character on television who's a real person and he died, who has AIDS and dies, and you see like you that watch journey. it. You know no, no, I mean? it was powerful. That that was important. It was but I powerful. Think, I think in some ways that and Puck being such an asshole overshadowed everything else, which is kind of right. why it was boring and why the other cast members couldn't really stand out. Yeah, yeah. and we don't know what they didn't show. Right, of those. People. But I think we needed Puck though. We needed someone to stick his finger in the peanut butter and. And pick right. his scabs but, over the sink. But the problem is, I think they tried to cast a puck every season after that. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, they yeah, yeah. Someone who's an asshole. And yeah, yeah, was, yeah, that's yeah, true. Which kind of, you know, they got this formula after that. That's true. I did love the London cast, London which people cast complained cool. is boring. They, London was boring, though. Which one was? London was my least favorite. Really? Mm hmm. I thought Boston was my least favorite. Boston? The only reason I liked Boston was when the chick got the uh, kids drunk. I found that to be hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she didn't understand. Montana? Yeah, and yeah. she didn't understand why that was problematic. She was working <laughs> at an after-school program. For the YMCA. And let some kids drink, drink wine. wine. And they were like, what, 10? Yeah, and yeah. she's like, I don't get what the big deal. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, that lady was an idiot. What an idiot. Uh, yeah, I always watch the real world, but uh, I MTV aired stuff a million times. Yeah. So at 8 I mean, at uh, yeah, eight thirty on a Sunday, I probably would not have watched it. I would have been watching Hardball, mm. which, although I hate baseball, was a new show on Fox that was sort of like a ripoff of Major League. It was you like a Major what? League the series. I couldn't remember what the show was about. Yeah. So I was like, I don't think I watched it because I was like, I, I couldn't remember it. So I was like, I don't think I was watching. Yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was. It was basically Major League the TV series. It wasn't great, but I definitely would have watched it. Uh, Nine o'clock. What are you going with? Married with Children. Did you watch this every week? Yes, I did. Did you love it? I loved it. Have you rewatched it since? Yes. And you still like it? Mmm. Oh, it's hard. It's cartoonish. Yeah, it's yeah. like I do for what it is, but I don't. It's it's not like a Cosby Show. I don't yeah. like it like that. Like it I watch Cosby Show up. and I laugh and I laugh. Well, Cosby laugh. Show is timeless. Yeah. Married with Children is very of it's time. like um. There's certain ones that I'm like, oh, yeah. I remember this one. It was great and it was funny. To me. And at this point, the show had been on for seven years. Yeah, and I'm, season I'm seven. trying. And see this one. So at this point, she's married Jefferson. Oh yeah, Jefferson came in in season three. Right. So yeah. So. So this episode is is yeah. what most sitcoms, if they go long enough, end up with an episode in this genre, and it's the dream genre. And so this one, Bud's intense studying for a scholarship makes him periodically nod off. So is the passionate encounter with Marcy's niece a dream or real? Yeah. Yeah. There's not very thought provoking stuff. No, it definitely is. But isn't. uh. <laughs> I don't know. I was 12. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I would have watched the <laughs> network television premiere of Total Recall. Yeah. Yeah. That, Even though it's that different television, I would have loved it. Saw it in the theater. Loved it. <laughs> loved it. Uh, 9.30, what'd you go with? I'm um, just watching MTV till, till, just I, videos? till I fall asleep. Videos and then Beavs and Buttheads coming on yeah. and like Liquid TV, which well, I was Liquid a big, television Yeah, was I was a big amazing. fan. The Slate, which I love. The State? I mean, The State, yeah, which I love. I'd watch The Slate. <laughs> the State, which was great. 
Sunday um, nights at MTV, I used to watch it midnight, 120 minutes. And that was where I heard all the music I loved. Yeah, I would yeah, tape yeah. it, watch it after school with a notebook, write down everything. <laughs> yeah, especially in 94. Especially in 94. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. MTV, yeah. All right, so Monday night, 8 o'clock, saddest night of the week. It's the best night of the week It's the me. best night of the week best for you? Best night of the week for me. What'd you go with? Melrose no Place. So you were super into Melrose Place? I was addicted. Did you watch 90210 and all that yes, stuff? Yes. Models Inc. I started to, but I didn't really love <clears throat> Models Inc. The Heights. I didn't really like any of that stuff. I was just Melrose. Just Melrose. It was just Melrose. What was it about Melrose Place that you liked? Um, it was it was just so much going on. Yeah. It was like, how could you not? There was like six different stories going on right. at once. Allison was the molested. Yeah. The Sydney was stripping. Chick blew up Melrose Place. She was this a ball? Crazy. She had a wig. Yeah. And, yeah. See, I, she was a nut bag. Like, it I was always just liked Heather great. Locklear, but I never watched First season? Melrose Place. Eh. Once they got rid of the black girl that they had there for no apparent reason. Well, you need a black girl. It was good. Yeah. Once they just got rid of her, like, okay, right. this was stupid. Yeah. Because she you, she never did anything. Right. She lived in the building, and that's really it. Like, right. she was not a part of any real thing. I, and also, Andrew Shue, I found boring. I liked Andrew Shue. Because they, they had that love thing going on. I liked when I would see him in interviews and stuff, but he just, when he would act in it. It didn't translate. See, yeah. I could, yeah. I could see that. So this particular episode, Allison doesn't like what she sees when she returns to work. Sydney rejects an offer for partial freedom. So she's in jail or something, I'm assuming? Sydney was just <coughs> a mess. Okay. And this uh, was when it really was getting good, because Sydney was trying to have sex with Doctor. What was the guy's name? The Doctor. Oh, I don't know. I never watched Melrose mm, Place. Yeah. Sydney was sleeping with the doctor, and the doctor was messing with Kimberly, and it was just crazy. Then we have Reed's parents visit Joe. Jane gives Michael a new oh, view yeah, on Joe. their past. Matt gives his opinion yeah, on Michael Mancini. Michael's hit and run to Kimberly, mm -hmm. uh, who answers with a threat. Woodward, with a threat. Yeah, Woodward Wayne. Yeah. Cause oh, Kathy Ireland was on the show at this time. Michael Mancini, yep, that was the doctor, and he was like a scumbag. Okay. And, Most doctors are. Yeah, and Sydney was like, she was stripping, she was drugging, and Kimberly was like, tired of Michael being a scumbag because he was sleeping around with Sydney behind her back, when you go and he to, killed somebody. When you go to strip clubs now, do you look at the women and go, maybe that's a Sydney? Maybe she's no, but I Sydney should. Going on. I should be doing she's that. Got a Sydney situation. <laughs> I should be doing that more. Writing fan fiction about them. And I'd probably go less if I thought. Yeah, yeah you're, just, you're paying a bunch of Sydneys. Uh, so I would not have watched this. I, I never watched the nighttime soaps. I really couldn't get into the show. Uh, I would have been torn between two movies. So on TV 38, the local UHF station here in the Boston area, they were showing Overboard, the mm. 1987 Goldie mm -hmm. Hawn movie, which I, mm. is one That's of my great. favorites. My wife, Rachel, watches that maybe twice a week still every <laughs> week. Or there was a made-for-TV movie starring Kelly Martin, who was done with Life Goes On but hadn't got her talk show yet, and it's called A Friend to Die For. Mm. They give it three stars, and it's on NBC, and it's a high school student's murder rocks an upper-middle-class town in this fact-based 1994 TV movie. The victim, a popular yet snobbish teen named Stacey Lockwood, played by Tori Spelling mm. of 90210. This is all good stuff. Yep. Her uneasy relationship with a sensitive and studious classmate, who's Kelly Martin, is the key to the crime, which the teleplay links rather tenuously to intense social pressures at school and mm. within the community. Valerie Harper is in it, who I'm a huge Huge fan of this met is once, cried in front of her. It was very embarrassing. Terry O'Quinn is in it, who later went on to be in uh, Lost, but he had just done The Stepfather 2. Uh, this sounds fantastic. Yeah, no, this sounds good. Yeah, I would have watched that. Uh, nine o'clock, would you go with? Nine o'clock, I am watching wrestling. So you passed up Mercy Murphy Brown. Because at this point, Murphy Brown's in syndication, I believe. So, so you would have watched it then? Yeah, I would watch that another time. This is a very special Murphy Brown, Sam. I would have watched it another time. A monkey guest stars in this episode of Murphy Brown. <laughs> This says Murphy must kiss up to station executives at an affiliates meeting after she badmouths her network's fall lineup. And if you look at the ad here, I will show it to you. It says, Murphy meets her match. Murphy takes on the network's new fall lineup and winds up with a monkey. Whoa. I don't know how that happens, but she somehow is in the custody. I kind of feel like I remember that episode, custody. too. So you're watching wrestling. Did you love wrestling? I loved wrestling. WWF, WCW? Both. All of it. Watch both. I watched both. Who's your favorite wrestler? Of all time is the Ultimate Warrior. Okay. Favorite wrestler of Rest all time. Rest in peace. Um, yeah. I saw great. him wrestle live. I did too. I saw him wrestle at the Garden. Uh, it was amazing. I um, saw him wrestle Andre the Giant at the Boston Garden. No, that's dope. I yeah. saw him wrestle uh, Macho Man, but okay. that would have been nice to see him yeah. wrestle Andre the Giant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just a big wrestling fan ever since I was a kid. I watched wrestling. You still watch it? Um, not as much. I do here and there. Not as much. I like Lucha Libre. 
Yeah, that's Lee fun. Lee fun. Yeah, and I've I've been watching um, Tokyo. Yes, that's the extremely that's yeah. like Cactus Jack and the yeah. landmine matches yeah. and the barbed wire matches. Yeah, yeah. that's been fun. But those people are this nuts. has got a little too soap opera after a while yeah. for me, like WWE and stuff. Oh yeah, by ninety four I had checked out. This time is this time it's pretty good still. So you're watching USA Network WWF Wrestling. Yeah. It doesn't tell us what the matches are. I'm still watching that made-for-TV movie. I want to mention, too, <laughs> at, uh, at 10 o'clock, I'm watching Northern Exposure, which I loved. I didn't get it. Loved it. Loved it. I didn't That's get it. That's my nighttime soap. I always want to go to Alaska just because of Northern yeah, Exposure. Yeah, like, now that I'm a, an adult, I'm like, oh, this was great. It's you a know? fun show. Have you rewatched Northern yeah. Exposure? It's good. It's good. It's a good show. But uh, when I was younger, I was like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Tuesday night. Eight o'clock. Full house. Are you sticking with ABC all night? No. Okay. No. I'm so not. full house tonight is uh Comets Come Home, the gang's on the run because the dog's on the loose. They chose this as their season premiere for that week. The dog gets loose. Comet is kind of the exam when Comet the Dog came into the Full House universe, that's kinda of when I stopped watching. Yeah. Not because I didn't like Comet, but that's I was just that <laughs> that's, sort of represents when I was too. Right. Old. That's when you were just like, Yeah, I yeah. can't get with this anymore. Yeah. I would have watched Wings. Which I loved. They moved it from Thursday nights to Tuesdays in 1994. Amy Yazbek joined the cast, who I love from Problem Child. My Channel. mom watched Wings. Wings is great. If, well, it makes sense. She's a fan of Cheers. Yeah. There was a lot of Cheers alum that that oh, made really? Wings. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, David she... Angel and a bunch of people from Wings. Yeah, she from, watched uh, Wings. Cheers. Yeah, Wings, very funny show. Full House, the eighth season opener, when Jesse's kicked out of the band because he's distracted oh. by all the things going on in his life, he soon becomes focused on revenge. They kicked him out of the Rippers. Yeah, it's no longer Jesse and the Rippers. It's just the Rippers. Yeah. It's sad day. It is a sad day. 8.30, sad day. what are you going with? Comic View on BT. So you're watching stand-up? Yes. And did you watch, was Comic View your go-to stand-up show? Yeah, at the time, it was the only thing I had real, like, access to, given, like, the time of day and stuff, you yeah. know? Like, it came on at 8.30. Any other type of stand-up was, like, late, late. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it was consistent. Because I couldn't watch Def Jam, you know? Def Jam was, like... Have you tried to watch that, though? Too late when I was a kid, you know? So like, you had HBO? Yeah, I had HBO, but Def Jam, I feel like, came on Did Saturday. You HBO in your room? Yeah. Wow. I feel like uh, I had all the channels. Wow. Yeah. Legally? Yeah. Because I had a black box. <laughs> yeah, legally. Yeah. My mom was very paranoid about stuff like that. She's like, no, they're going to find us. Okay. So she wouldn't do she things like that. She didn't care you were watching, like, potentially inappropriate things. I don't... She... Like, would she you was, watch, like, Skinamax and that kind of stuff? Sometimes. That? But she, like... She wasn't really strict with me about TV. She was strict right. with me about how I behave. It was like, you better be able to know the difference between reality So she and, didn't like, see a connection between the two? No. She's just like, you know, like, know that this is a separate thing from, right. like, life. Right. <laughs> like, and that's right. it. So I didn't Comic watch View. Comic View that often. I, it was... I didn't watch Def Jam either. I, I just couldn't... It was very... Okay, so the thing is, Def Jam, <laughs> Comic View, all these, like, urban comedy shows... They were very This is like geared, a formula. Yeah, gear it yeah. was like geared to one like keel and like yeah. very formulaic and like you know you have to get up, you gotta talk about getting a beaten. Yeah. You gotta talk now when I was young, when I was twelve and my mind wasn't like mature enough to like really wrap myself around deep concepts and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlin type material, it was just funny to me. You there know, like a lot uh-huh. of people that stood out to me as being like an interesting individual. There wasn't any. It was just very much there like was a few. You would get some every now and then. I like, think it was more so the host though. Yeah, but I remember the first time I saw Bernie Mac on Yeah, Bernie Def Mac Chan. or Chris Tucker. Yeah. Chris Tucker stood out. But like Bernie Mac was still talking about the same topics that would you know getting beaten all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, I remember when I saw him on Def Comedy Jam, I was like, this guy is yeah. different. Like yeah. something he's yeah. got something else what's going on yeah man. i mean I, I feel like that that's just a time when like they were just you know like david from the real world a terrible comedian. <laughs> right. Sure he was like the wor- like the most generic he was like leaping lenny from yeah. wwf but just, i wanted him to make it but he just wasn't I, good he wasn't and they would like follow him around yeah, I, just, I, wanted him, I wanted him to make it yeah i did yeah i wanted david to make it i would not have watched he was in house yet. party three he was so was uh boston comedian chance langton was it? Oh, yeah. What was he doing in House Party 3? He's one of the professors, I believe. He's in House Party 3. Oh, two. Is he two? Two. Yeah. Uh, dark skin guy with with the boxer cut? No, Chance Langdon, white guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I met him. Yeah, I think he's in House Party 3. Yeah, I met him. Yeah. I met him. Yeah, we can confirm which House Party he's in, but I know he's in a House Party. Cool. Um, so we're at uh, 8.30. I'm watching the Martin Short Show. 
mm. which was Martin Short's very short-lived sitcom. Mm. Uh, and this was on NBC. And this is a luckless Marty drops big bucks in a high-stakes poker game with some Hollywood hotshots, including Bruno Kirby playing himself. I love Martin Short. He's from SCTV, one of my favorite sketch shows of all time. Just a weird, funny guy. I like Martin Short. Credit. Fantastic. Uh, nine like o'clock, would you go with? Home Improvement. Oh, Sam. Why are you disappointed in it? Home Improvement. It was funny. It's not. It's not. Have you ever watched it? <laughs> First of all, I like JTV. <laughs> I like Every, Jonathan Taylor I've Thomas. I've never met a girl that, that in our age range that doesn't like right. JTV, and I'm shocked by that. <laughs> What did you like about him? First of all, I have a long history of crushes on baby face white boys. I was, okay. I was very into Fred Savage. Okay. I just, I'm, I like those types. And I like baby face. I like the those actual types. baby face. <laughs> I like yeah. those types. So, uh, JTT was just, you know, he was cute. How was he? I thought he was a weird looking kid. He was very cute. I don't know. He was, I like, it's not my I've type. noticed I like, I like my white men classic. Like, Blonde and blue. Though? Like he was blonde and blue. That's why I like him. Was, did he have blue eyes? I always feel like he had just black soul. No, no, no. He had blue or green. Are you thinking of the blonde older kid? That's not JTT. No. The goofy dumb one? No, no, no. I'm thinking of JTT, the young okay. smart one right. who I was into. All right. He had the like kind of a Did you bob. go see his movies? No. Okay, so you weren't that into No, him. no, I wasn't crazy. So in this particular episode, a tool time special puts Tim in the cab of a hydraulic crane. What's going to happen? He drops a three-ton beam on Jill's car. Oh, no. Well, that's one way to eliminate that scratch Tim was going to have to repair. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How, don't, how do you not want to watch that? That's Oh, it was the worst. It wacky. was great. And then you had, uh, who was his partner who was smarter than him? Al. Al, right? Yeah. Great. It Al Borland. I liked By Richard Kind. I liked Home Improvement. Richard Karn. Yeah. yeah. Richard Karn. I liked Home Improvement. I can't. I can't. Can't do it. I would have been watching Kids in the Hall. See? Adult me says Kids in the Hall. Yeah. But I had to be true to what I really would have been watching. Fair enough. You know, because I saw Kids in the Hall and I was like, mm, I liked it. But I didn't really start watching Kids in the Hall. Until I was older, yeah, you know? I loved so, it. I, I was watching it forever. At 12, I was... And I would watch it, like, late. For some reason, I remember, yeah. like... In HBO the, was on late. Yeah. yeah. That's why I feel like I used yeah. to watch it in the summer, really late at night. Yeah, this is a Comedy um, Central rerun. It, 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 here in America, it aired on HBO first. They're, right. Yeah. And that's when I used to watch it. So I, yeah. And I just have to be true. 12-year-old Sam is watching Home yeah. Improvement. Fair enough. Fair enough. You're standing by it. Uh, I, at 9.30, what'd you go with? I just watched Grace Under Fire because it was just on. It I didn't, wasn't a bad It show. wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. And it was very much in the Roseanne vein, which yeah. makes sense. It was a lot of behind-the-scenes people. Right. Brett Butler's sort of onstage persona was sort of Roseanne-ish. Uh, it had Dave Thomas, also of SCTV. In this episode, Grace Ty uh, tries to defuse the situation when a new woman on the crew files a sexual discrimination grievance against Bill. Sounds a little boring. Yeah. But I would have watched it just because. I would have normally watched it if there was nothing else against it that I really liked. But John Larroquette was on, which was an amazing, amazing sitcom. This was season one See, of John Larroquette. I loved him from Night Court. Yeah. But I wasn't watching his show. Like, I feel like that show was just too adult for me. It was me. very grim. It was yeah, very dark. Yeah, I wasn't watching the show. It's about an alcoholic who ruined his life and is the manager at a bus station. Yeah, I, I wasn't mean, watching the show. It's a sad show. But I did like him from Night Court. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's like, I love him in anything he's ever done. Uh, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, what'd you go with? Wednesday night, um, Beverly Hills, now turn off course. So you're, you're with the Aaron Spelling shows all night. It's, it's Beverly Hills time. It's that time. <laughs> like, there's nothing else I would rather be watching. At 8 o'clock, so did you watch all, like, every season of it? You watched Pretty much. I didn't really abandon Beverly Hills, not a know, until way late. I pretty much saw it all. Because that's a show that ended. I took a year off in protest. Okay. I did do that. What was the thing that sparked your protest? Um... Tori Spelling was supposed to give it up to Brian Austin Green. She didn't. And she did not. And I was livid. And at that point, I just didn't like what he was doing. Because I felt like Aaron Spelling, you know, everybody's screwing He's on the show. Tease. And everybody's screwing on the show. And yeah. you just don't want your daughter to get Before screwed. Though, I don't really want to picture or think of Tori Spelling having sex ever. I didn't want to. But I just felt like, how come everybody else could be a whore? Bait and switch. You felt like you got you yeah. got lied to. And it's like everybody else could do it. Like Fair enough. Everybody's doing it. For some reason, because she's your daughter, she yeah. can't be doing it. To be, if you and were a daughter and you were producing a show, would you want to shoot an episode where she has sex? No. Yeah. But the young me didn't care. I was. At I two, had enough. Sam J. I had At enough. Two. Uh, this, particular, this particular episode, what brought you back? 
I couldn't really stay away. It's, and you were it's just, not you, you, you were having like the DTs <laughs> from it. So this episode, so David finds a woman too close to home for Donna's liking until she finds a new man herself. Brandon has trouble handling his. Oh, so is this was she met the dude from the pumpkin patch. I yep, think. and his uh, challenge and a challenge to his political position agrees to ground rules with Dylan. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about this. Nothing. Yeah, well. I know all about it. I would have watched the show. <laughs> I know all about Fair it. enough. I would have watched a show that I never watched at the time, but uh, I recently did an episode with a cast member from this show, and it sounded great. And I wish that I had watched it then. It was called Thunder Alley. No. No. I don't know about no? that. No. Thunder Alley's Ed Asner and Haley Joel Osment. And Jim that's Beaver, not, yeah, former guest of the podcast, Jim Beaver. Uh, it's a sitcom. The odds are good that there will be trouble in the Turner household when Gil takes the kids out of school to go to the racetrack. Mm. I like that. That's legitimately something that happened to me as a kid. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My grandparents took me to would, would take me out of school and we'd go to the racetrack and bet on horses. Yeah. My you know what my aunt used to do? She'd call, I'd get called down to the principal's office like with a family emergency. Right. So I'd be like, oh, who died? And my aunt would be like, we have to go. We have to go to the hospital. So I'm like, what the hell? Like, who's sick? We get in the car and she's like, we're going to the movies. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to go. And she's like, I wanted someone to go to the movies with. <laughs> And we go to the movies. That's pretty awesome. I, but sort of, but not when you think someone's dead. <laughs> well, so, Beverly Hills, yeah. I did want to make a point about now to an O. Okay. This is such a big part of who I am as a person in my life. Which, um, not to be, not to offend you, is surprising. I wouldn't say that. Oh, no, yeah. Knowing no. you, I wouldn't be mm. like, I bet 90210 is a big part of Sam's big life. Part of, big part of my life. And I, I appreciated Aaron Spelling's rebound because I was so upset that he didn't let her do it. But then, right. like, he let mad crazy stuff happen to let her. Let her do too much stuff. Yeah, they got crazy. Like, then Pumpkin, that's what I called him, Ray. Yeah. Because she met him at a pumpkin patch. Okay. He was beating her up and stuff yeah. and, like, throwing her down the stairs. It got real crazy. It's weird that you're going to be like, I won't let my daughter have sex on Friday. Right, but, but you let her get, get the shit kicked out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what I like. A little weird. It got crazy. And I think it was like, there had to be some form of outcry of people, like, why isn't her character? Because her character really never did much of anything. She's very goody goody. Right. Like, everyone was on coke and it was yeah. just crazy it was insane i guess and, again this show i think it I, I i know at the time i felt like it sort of um lionized behavior that i hated in kids my age mm. see i didn't know anybody doing this kind of stuff there was coke heads at my school see, no i had no idea like date, none, rapey douchebags none of and, that was happening so i was just like oh my yeah. god this is so entertaining to wow me. Yeah. yeah and then no, the no, one with the kid shot himself David's oh yeah because he was <gasps> flipping the gun yeah. around yeah oh my god check this out man yeah. i remember the what? i remember the Riveting ads stuff. for that. they Riveting were like stuff. but i remember i remember getting an argument at school because there were people on the Friday after that because this one was on Thursday nights I think that were legitimately upset like they were crying because some <laughs> kind of, some dick <laughs> And, and I had seen he was doing like a like yeah, a like a was, lone ranger yeah, gun spinning yeah. and he shot himself. And I remember it was sad. I was upset was about it because and that character also was like just introduced. In no, he was only there for a day. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But so, I was very I was very torn up but about it. I remember it. these girls at school were really upset. No, I was too. I went on a I was like <laughs> oh, yeah, like flipping the gun around and like acting it out. I'd it was upsetting. No it they was They started crying. They told on the principal to me. <laughs> and I was like, are you making fun of someone they know that died? And I go, no. I'm making fun of a show they watched last night and then the person was like stop doing it get out of here yeah that one specifically I remember 8.30 I would have gone with All American Girl which was Margaret Cho's short lived sitcom mm. I really enjoyed her stand up at the time and I, yeah. I would have watched it not a great show uh, also miserable for her as she has documented many times yeah, yeah. no, I, I feel like now. I've seen it once or twice but it wasn't Dang. I liked her I liked her stand up it's very different from her stand up yeah her stand up was great she <clears> had that joke you should kill me about her her grandmother found her dildo and thinking yes. it was a curling iron. Yes, yes. That was great. It's happened to all of us. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, nine o'clock, what are you going with? Roseanne. Love Roseanne. Mm -hmm. Just a perfect, perfect sitcom. One yeah. of my all-time favorites. Uh, Dan isn't the only one who's a wreck about Roseanne's pregnancy. It did start to go a little downhill here when Roseanne got pregnant. She was at the height of her like public crazy right, whatever. Right. But it was still an enjoyable show. It was still good. I would have watched it. I really didn't like the idea of her and Dan doing it, but whatever. No, but if it was Tori Spelling and Dan, you would have been okay. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Definitely. <laughs> but I like the idea that there was a television show with people who looked like what most Americans look like. Yeah. And they were doing it. No, and I like that. And I, yeah, I like the idea. And I liked how real it was, like what everybody liked about Roseanne. Like, I like yeah. the fact that it was like, we can't afford this baby. We're going to lose no, the house. Yeah, we not for a baby. Yeah, yeah, not like, oh, yay, baby coming. But yeah. the reality, like, some people don't want a baby. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it can be like a problem. Absolutely. You know, so I thought that was really great. Don't let your baby play with a gun. 
Uh, so, yes. and I would have passed up Models Inc. in favor of Roseanne, and I did love Models Inc. and watch it every week. Uh, nine. Wait, th- wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. You're models. not just gonna, you're not just gonna jump, just over, jump that. over that. Jump over that. No, yeah. you can't because you've criticized my Beverly Hills choice, right? My Merrill's Place choice, right? But you watched Models Inc. Let me tell you something <laughs> about Ken Reed and Models. <laughs> I, ever since I was little, love the world of modeling in high fashion <laughs> but not like a oh yeah like lecherous way I just thought it was fascinating mm. and I knew who the designers were and all the supermodels and I used to watch House of Style every week mm. which was my favorite show on MTV uh, it was amazing you are an interesting it's man, a little Ken. strange isn't it yes yeah. so Models Inc I was very excited about I do remember when I was doing Models Inc when they changed the shampoo and turned the girl's hair green yes that was yes. a good one <clears throat> that was a pretty good one in a classic uh, sitcom plot going back to the Brady Bunch when uh, Greg's hair turns green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a movie called The Boy with the Green Hair, which uh, is from the 60s, which is a very weird sort of anti-war movie that stars Dean Stockwell from from Quantum Leap as a kid. Uh, Very weird movie. Yeah. Great movie. Strange movie. Yeah. So Models, Inc. This is kind of a fun show. (laughs) Models. I used to watch VIP. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, it is. A little weird. A little weird. Uh, 9.30, what are you going with? I had a question on Heather Locklear, by the way. Who did? I, I realize that now. As did you ever see the return? That was Smoke another Day? like girl crush that I had. I feel like every human being on Earth, regardless. Heather Locklear of, was freaking yeah. hot. It's Heather Locklear. She was hot. Who doesn't like Heather Locklear? She was hot. Which was the only reason I watched Models Inc. at all because I was like, forget it. She's on it. I'm yeah, watching. fair enough. Um, do you, have you ever seen Return of Swamp Thing? No. Good Heather Locklear content in that okay. movie. Yeah, I, you should watch that. I it's a fun, that fun movie. Fun movie. She's funny in it as well. Uh, Nine thirty. MTV. You just going back to MTV? Yeah. Videos? Yeah, just videos and just, crap. Yeah, fair enough. It's a show actually called Videos and Crap. <laughs> now, I think I probably would have gone Beavis with Alan. and Butthead. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead. I, never I loved could, it. Here's, I couldn't get into it. I loved I'll it. I'll tell you why. It's so good. It's so good. Beavis and Butthead was the only time they would show a lot of videos I liked. And I would be really annoyed that they'd be talking, talking over the yes, video. Exactly. You're such exactly. an old man. I know. I always have been, though. <laughs> I always have been. So I'm consistent. I'm at least consistent. Thursday night, 8 o'clock. What Martin. You Martin. You loved Martin? Loved Martin. I couldn't get into Martin. Let's talk about how great Martin was. You know what? This is the thing. Some people criticize Martin because they're like it was a lot of like stick and over the top acting, silly and silly I hated stuff, Shanae-nae. and the characters and all that stuff. But for me, um, I thought he did that stuff so well. Like it was in the tradition of like older sitcoms, you know, like what, and, like the way it was played up. But I'm trying to think of like some that I can think of. So like you could head. even get into it with like Shanae and all that stuff. Hilarious. Oh, I just couldn't. Hilarious. It was so cartoony. Martin, Martin is still a, a talk like a show I can watch now. Did you rewatch it? Yes, and die laughing. Did you like his stand up? First one, yes. Okay. Second one, no. Yeah, I mean, but, because the show is very different from his stand up. Yeah, but I thought he was. I thought he did the characters well. I, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you on that. I just didn't um, like the characters. <laughs> Like the little kid, the the kung fu dude. Yeah, it's just it was hilarious. It was just the security too broad. guard, it was too Otis. Broad for me. And then the other, like Tracy Morgan as Hustle Man. Yeah. Um, this episode, man from Fifth Floor. Uh, Disenchanted with the single scene at Nipsey's. Mm-hmm. Martin enlists the aid of Otis and Pam to help win Gina back. Yeah. And they had like a good. You know what also was too like. They were a young, like they were a young love, but it was like quality. Like you really felt like Martin and Gina loved each other. It, but see, you know, I really liked Gina. Yeah. And I, when I would watch it, I'd be like, she can do better than this. <laughs> I really thought that. I really thought that. Who thought that? I thought that. You didn't think she could do better than Martin? Is kind I've of, never heard anyone say that. But he was like kind of a loser, and she was like kind of successful, and you know, she was. She could have done so much better. Than, Yo, she was keeping him afloat. Kim Reed is officially a hater. Bro. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you don't think Gina could? If you don't think Gina could have done better than Mark, that was real wrong. love. That was real love, and it was like young. He treated it her was bad. like young hip hop era love, and that's what I liked about it. Like poetic justice. Yeah. See, I saw that because I love Janet Jackson. <laughs> Janet Jackson's like my favorite. Yeah. She's and we discussed so. this before. I think she's the better Jackson. She is. She's the best one. I saw Poetic Justice and I was like, uh, Tupac, you are not nearly good enough for Janet <laughs> so Jackson. So you're a hater. You are it's not official. Nearly... Is that what a hater is? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that is. Is that someone who just hates dudes <laughs> yeah. who are dating women? Yes. That... That's a hater? <laughs> yes. You don't think Janet Jackson could have done better than a Tupac? Is a... <laughs> a hater is a dude who's like... You can do better than that guy. Like, but I'm right. I don't think that about everyone. 
Just Jenna Jackson and, and Gina. That was Gina. That was quality. Martin was good for her. You think that he could have done better than her? Ooh, probably not. No. <laughs> Probably he not. was lucky to have her. But it was like, especially if you were a house party fan, it was good to see them together, acting together in a role. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it was like... Did you go see all the house party movies in the theater? I, I didn't see any of them in the theater. Really? I saw all of them at home. I saw all of them in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I saw Baby's Kids in the theater. I saw Baby's Kids in the theater, yeah. and that was good. Robin Harris. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have gone with Martin. Normally, I would have gone with Mad About You. Mm. which was uh, probably as far from Martin as you can get yeah. in the show. But a really smart, funny show, and maybe I think the most underrated sitcom of the 90s. I watched it old, it's as funny. A, older, and yeah. I enjoyed it. It's funny, but mm-hmm. this was the one year that Thursday nights were my, my so-called life night. Mm. And I've discussed this before, but my so-called life was a show that I watched from day one mm-hmm. because I loved 30-something. It was about characters that were my age at that time. So it's about a 14-year-old girl. I was a 14-year-old, not a girl, mm-hmm. but close. Uh, and a similar <laughs> haircut. And uh, I love the show. It, it just captured what it felt like for me exactly at that time. It's and a good when, show. I, when I watch it now, it's like looking through a high school yearbook or something. Like yeah. I have those sorts of, um, it was sort of my, my what I wanted my high school to be like by proxy. Right. And, and there was a girl that I had a crush on at my high school, mm-hmm. the only one I, high school, I had a crush on in high school. And every Friday. I felt I, that way about Dawson. Creek or something. Yeah, well, it's sort of similar. Sort of similar. Uh, Kevin, um, Kevin, what's his name that created Dawson's Creek and wrote the Scream movies? Kevin Williamson? Uh, he based Dawson's Creek on a show called James at 15, mm. which is a 70s show set in Boston. And I love James at 15, so I watched Dawson's Creek and I was just kind of disappointed with it. Because it's about sort of rich kids in the South. Oh, so good. But my soul called life. Yeah, no, felt that was real. a good show. Yeah, and I got to talk to this girl every Friday. And they had it. the gay character. Yeah, Ricky. Well, Which they never really talked about him being gay. It, it wasn't a huge deal. It was obvious to yeah, everybody. Yeah, there was like it was that was a good like this is when like the gay stuff was like happening kind of you know. <laughs> I pull like, a quote for the end of the episode. And I think that'll be because <laughs> it, like, it was like okay. Like, it was when was, mainstream started, accepting right? Gay like it, and it was like we this is something we need to talk about or yeah. something. But it was always like a huge deal. Like a gay well, episode would be like two episodes. It yeah, would I mean, be you, like a two be continued. Some shows like when the chick kissed gay episode. Uh, <laughs> like the chick who kissed Roseanne, yes, you yeah. know, and it was like oh my god. Yeah, I think the difference was in, at this time in the '90s was it was sort of a progressive time. You know, you had Clinton in the White House and all this stuff. But you did have gay characters on television prior to this, but they were always a figure of fun. They were the butt of jokes. No pun intended. Right. Or they Uh, were, like, gay, but they wouldn't say outright they were gay. Like, Anthony from Designing Women. Yeah. You'd be laughing at their femininity, basically. Right. Like, Anthony was definitely gay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But they were just like, he's been to prison and he's Southern. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, Uncle Arthur from Bewit. I mean, there's a ton of these characters. Yeah. But it was really around this time you started getting gay characters in dramas Mm -hmm. and, you know, presented just as a real person. Yeah. They're not a, they're not a, a punchline. Right. And that was interesting. Definitely. Yeah. And uh and, and I agree that that character was like a lot of kids at high school, there was definitely the gay kid. Yeah. Who now probably is out of the closet and doesn't, boy and doesn't care. Doesn't care at uh, all. But every you know, there was a kid in every grade yeah. that probably every I feel like it was I grew up in a great time in that sense that like by the time I was like in high school, there were gay straight alliances happening right. in schools right. and like so you had a support. Right. And I was in the GSA, I was on the straight side because that's what I thought I was at the time. But Did you really think that? Yeah, I, I had a boyfriend. I had a boyfriend yeah. from the time I was fifteen until I was like twenty two. So well, what three, maybe somewhere around that. What tra- like when did you decide it was You know what? I think it was more of a when you when you meet someone that young, you know, yeah. you're still developing and figuring oh, stuff yeah. out. And so it was like he was the only person I was with, you know right. what I mean? And then we lost our virginity to each other at like right. eighteen. So it was the person, not the gender. And it was exactly yeah. it was him. I just really, really loved him. And then yeah. once we worked together and I'm like out exploring like yeah. the world, I'm like, I don't think I'm really that into yeah. guys. Like yeah. I'm just not really that attracted to guys. I don't really find that connection with guys. Well, they're gross. And then I had, they put, they put me in shock. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, maybe I like girls. It was really one of these like, yeah. But it wasn't like, of, oh my God, maybe it was kind of like, you know, no. maybe, yeah. I think because I, at that point I was such a solo person, you know, my, like my mom had died, like I said, so I was really out in this world on my own. Right. So the only opinion at that point that mattered to me was mine. Do you think if your mom had been still alive, you would have been I'd less have, likely yes. to? Yes. Because she, you don't think she would have been? No. Really? No. She would have eventually, like if my mom was alive, I'd still have long hair. I right. would never cut my hair. Like I'd, I'd be gay, but yeah. there would just be things I would not do. You'd because, be girly gay? Yeah, because she would be completely just offended. 
but like, right. by any of that, right. like, dude, that is not my daughter who I had. Right. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah. So no, definitely not. Yeah. I'm just like a sporty girl. Like I wear right, a lot right, of like right. you know basketball shorts. Yeah, Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. In a pony. Fair tail. enough. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What kind of sneakers did you have? Patrick Ewing's. Oh, Patrick Ewing's. Yeah, yeah you were gay. <laughs> I, used to them, I used to wear them with my uniform, my Catholic school skirt. And they were uniform. cool with that? Yeah, they they you could wear any shoe you wanted. Really? Mm-hmm. See, I don't I didn't know anything about uniforms and interesting. The shoe was not part of the uniform. No. Did kids really push the rules on that? Yeah, and you could wear any like shirt. Like I used to get the polo shirts, right. but then they said that like the poor kids who couldn't get polo shirts were feeling some kind of way, and so they like. You had they t-shirts? The no, we had like a button ups. Oh, good. Like you had different colors, like yellow, yeah. blue. But I would get polo ones. Right. And then they were like, "I'm, you know, all the other kids go to the uniform store, right? And they would appreciate if I would follow suit." Ah, so they were like, "Stop oppressing these kids mm-hmm. with your rich hoity toity." Yeah. Like Sam and my mom would bring me McDonald's, and they told her she couldn't do that anymore. She would bring you McDonald's to school. Sometimes, yeah. And they were like, "Nah, you can't do that." <sighs> you spoiled me. I was. <laughs> you maybe you were possessed. By <laughs> Um, so where are we? Eight thirty on uh, Thursday night. What are you going with? Living single. Now living single, I loved. Loved great. it. It was a great show. But those characters seem real. I Unlike get it. Martin, you know Martin. No, was Martin was cartoony. just I, Martin was just strictly comic relief. Like, yeah. Like I thought it was just a lot. Like I loved David Allen Gray as Reverend Money Love. I liked David Allen Gray too, but it, I, I feel like good. Martin had no heart. I could see That's that. That's what bothered me. I could see that. It had no heart. It seemed like a very superficial show. I could see that. And living single, I was like, these people are friends. This makes sense. The relationships mm-hmm. make sense. And, and going along with the other choices you've made, I yeah. could see why you would need that in yeah. the show. Yeah. I think if something was just purely comedic. Whereas I liked Home Improvement. So you could see why I don't yes, yes, need makes that sense. You don't show. need that. And living <laughs> single, and I still contend, I still contend that living single was ripped off by NBC, who made friends. Which is yeah. white living single. That yeah. is all it is. And you know what? Now we're back to being friends, Ken, because I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's a mm-hmm. complete rip off of it Living is. Single. It's not as good as Living Single in any way. Yeah, that's and it never right, got the it? audience that Living Single got. And Living Single was a better show. Yeah, it was. It was a, a quality better... show. And yeah. I do miss that time in television where like Fox was perpetuating like quality black shows. You but know? I think it wasn't by design. I think it was because no one else was. Yeah. And they saw a market they could make money. Right. And but but even like even now, there's even back then with movies. I just felt like even the black movies that were coming out were like better. You know, even now it's like yeah. you get like a lot of like I don't know. This is Soul the, Plane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's just it's like the, the it was like they were really. I think we've gone backwards in a lot of ways. Right. I think I think in the seventies you had well it actually goes back to the nineteen thirties. You had these movies called race movies mm. that were all black cast movies and. Some of them were good because no one was... Like Carmen and stuff like that? Uh, no, like you had Westerns with all black mm-hmm. casts. You had this movie called The Bronze Buckaroo. Mm-hmm. You had pretty much any genre, but with all black actors. Mm-hmm. And to a degree, some of the movies ended up being great because they were also sort of produced by black people right. for a black audience. And so it was, um, you know, we're just making good movies. And then once you started getting into like the seventies black exploitation, a lot of those were made by white people mm-hmm. with an all black cast. And it right. was here's what we think black audiences want. want. And then you have people who grow up on that and it becomes what they want. Exactly. So you kinda had people that grew up with that in the seventies and it That's was That's how I felt about B T. Yeah. It was like B T was a good channel when Bob Johnson owned it. Yeah. And you had like Teen Summit and you had yeah. programming it was that smart. it was smart. Yeah. And then MTV bought it and they were like, this is what black Here's people what you like. Here's what want. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, no, like there's no more BT news. They took that but away. But the problem is, like, I think that if you do that long enough, it does become what Right. That's what I'm saying. And now it's like, yeah, this is what we want. Yeah. But it's like, because the option. Well, in the nineties you had, I mean, like Poetic Justice, you had, uh, you know, John Singleton and yeah. the Hughes brothers and all these amazing black, uh, directors mm-hmm. and writers and Spike Lee I never he was always pretty clownish uh, right. but you know was one of the first guys that sort of set that mm-hmm. path uh, going but you had them making serious interesting movies right. and then I think the thing that sort of started to change that was like the Friday movies mm-hmm. and you started seeing it switch with like Friday and yeah, Barbershop it, it, it was, was still so interesting the, yeah cause I'm like Friday was such a good movie the first one the first one yeah the first uh, we can get 10 on this yeah, well, it Friday starts after to next, slide Friday After Next is pretty amazing but it starts to slide <laughs> Friday After Next is pretty amazing it might be my favorite friday yeah um, 
But it was still funny, you know, yeah. and it was good. But and you it was can like, see the the yeah. tone shift if yeah. you watch them. Like yeah. that's a good example of something coming out of that nineties wave. Like you had a movie called um called uh Tales from the Hood. Yeah, which was terrible. But it was it was, it was good. good. It was well made. I, I was mean, scared. you know, like and stuff. Yeah, but I was it was scared. a smart movie. I was scared of the, uh, the the one with the dolls. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah the little voodoo dolls. Yeah, you know, like Fear of a Black Hat and mm-hmm. CB4, mm-hmm. which were like Spinal Tap, right. really funny, smart movies. Um, and like Hollywood Shuffle and Yo, all these things. Dope. And then you get like White Girls, yeah, and Soul Plane, right, and Little Man, right, and then Medea like takes over, and uh, it was just terrible. They're terrible. They're I awful. totally agree. And it's like, why, why are we bothering with this? I thing? don't know. And that's the that's what stinks but I think what happened at Fox then was they said hey look we don't we need to be a network different from the other three networks mm-hmm. we also don't have a lot of money so a lot of people got a chance to do something interesting right. and you had shows created by and starring black people yeah. that weren't sort of being run by a person who says here's the black show I would like right. and you got stuff like rock and you got stuff like living single and I think Martin. it's also this idea like with uh, I and mean, we can we talk about this a lot but I think it's also this idea of um like, people kind of, like, age out and aren't doing the work. And it's yeah. just, like, this whole, like, letting one black person at a time do stuff. Right. So it's like, you know what I mean? We're, we're only going to do Once these... Once that person's gone, right. and someone else gets Because I'm thinking, it, like, oh, like, we had Boomerang, we had this, we had that. But I'm yeah. like, damn, so much of that stuff, Eddie Murphy was behind. Yeah, and he had his own production company, and yeah. Boom. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I think that plays a role in it, too. Yeah, you have less people being the tastemakers. It's like if Adam Sandler was the only white guy making stuff. Right. Basically, you would be like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, Little Man's just as yeah, bad as Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, but we yeah. have like who, like two or three people that are making things now. It's yeah. like the Waynes and Tyler Perry. So if, if you're not being filtered through one of these two, yeah. either yeah. through him producing it, backing it, right. or writing it, right. then it's like... Pfft. Yeah, and you wonder why there, there's less opportunities because those are established people. And even Tyler Perry sort of established himself in the mid-90s. Right. So, you know, when's... Who's the new person? Right, There's right. not been anyone to come take the mantle of that mm-hmm. stuff. And, and, you know, I wish there wasn't a mantle. We just get stuff. But, I mean, you know, I, I think there's less stuff being made generally. And there's less risks being taken. Right. So they're making things that they think will make money. Yep. And because Soul Plane made money, they're going to make yeah, Soul it's Plane like, too. Yeah, we go or, and, wa- yeah. and we supported them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Living Single, great show. This is an awesome show. Um, Loved everything about it. Oh, I absolutely did too. And I watched it the whole time. Great, com- great comedic timing with Overton and... Um, well, the, Anybody he would really interact with, but it, it, was, just, it was such a good ensemble cast. Yeah. Like it was a really great ensemble cast. And on the Thursday night in '94, it was directly against Friends. Mm. It was up against Friends. Mm. And I remember I watched it every week, and kids would watch Friends. And on Friday, I was like, "You're dumb." <laughs> no one agreed with me. No one agreed with me. Uh, so nine o'clock, would you go with New York Undercover? Really? Did you watch this every week? Yes. So this is after a popular college student is killed, Williams and Torres discover that the deceased had been selling marijuana and had also a juvenile record. Mm. So you like these police procedural shows? Um, New York Undercover was dope because New York Undercover incorporated hip hop, the hip hop culture, with right. like a cop detective drama, okay. with like urban stories, like yeah. stuff that would happen like in your neighborhood. You so know in this case, it's the exact opposite of everything else you're yeah. watching. Yeah. Okay. It's like, you know, like, they would have that club that they would go to at the end, Estelle's yep. or something like that, and it would be like Mary J. Blige is performing, or yeah, this yeah. was performing, or that one's performing. So you had that aspect of like the music I was listening to at right. the time, and then like they would dress Tommy Hilfiger and like so this was like you're my so-called life. yeah, <laughs> like they were Tommy Hilfiger and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. then it was like these were interesting stories, like stories I could relate to. But it was it's still, I thought the acting was good. Yeah, this um, was definitely a quality show. I mean, yeah, it's a good show. I thought it was a great show. And, it and was the little side stories were good, like Malik Yoba. I mean, and his yeah. son. G and the then with the mother arc, and yeah. the ongoing arc of that and the father with the being the booze dude with it's the drugs. It's a show that doesn't get a lot of love these days and it was one of the best shows of that crop of police procedures yeah. that now everyone's like uh, you know um, um, Homicide and yeah. uh, Law and Order. They all kind of started around the same time and I do think New York Kind of Cover was probably the best right. of those And the shows. intros were always dope. Like the beginning yeah. was always hard. It would be like the music the crime, would, yeah. The, yeah the music would be ill yeah, and yeah. you just see like a footstep in a puddle. Right, right. Right. <laughs> like something drop on the ground you're like oh yeah this is gonna yeah. be crazy and again a show that had a very of its time aesthetic but in a good way yeah it makes it not seem as dated yeah weirdly. it was it was dope I remember one um, episode Torres had a Tommy Hilfiger shirt that I had definitely wore that to school okay. the next, I definitely yeah. wore that to school the next Did day anyone was like, everyone was like oh you got the Torres oh, yeah. really so everybody <laughs> at school watched it yeah fair enough uh, I would have watched Seinfeld <laughs> 
far this is from great. New York and we're just, we're just yeah. on like opposite sides. Well, Seinfeld, you could probably call New York overcover. <laughs> Our Thursdays are like... Oh, yeah, they're very different. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we're watching Living Single. We we're are. We're both watching Living Single. Uh, this one, Kramer fears a golf dispute, has pushed his opponent to murder. George gets no credit for buying Elaine's lunch. Jerry dates a woman whom Newman rejected. You know what's absolutely hilarious about, like, I love Seinfeld, right? But it's another show I didn't start watching until I was older. Right. But we had this friend, my friend uh, Anthony Schofield, right? We lived, we all, you know, lived in the same neighborhood. And he would constantly talk about how hilarious Seinfeld was. Right. And he'd be like, you guys don't watch Seinfeld? Your show's dumb. Like, it's right, great. Right. And we'd be like, yo, who's, it's New York Undercover Hour. Like, yeah, everybody in the neighborhood is on one accord. Yeah. We watch New York Undercover. Like, no one's watching Seinfeld. And one day we were all playing basketball. And he was like, I dip my head in oil and rub it all over the body. And we were like, what are you talking He's about? He's quoting Seinfeld. And he was like, George Costanza, Seinfeld. Yeah. We were like, yo, what? And then when I got older, I got into it. I was like, oh no, he's right. This show is absolutely yeah, great. Yeah, it is good. I mean, I do think it doesn't hold up as well. It's a really dated show. It's like one of the most '90s shows. Yeah. And when I tried to rewatch it as an adult. I'm you like, know what? Mm. I couldn't. I tried to last week. I was like, oh, I'm about to just watch Mad Seinfeld. As... I smoked a J, and I was like, this is gonna be great. And I was just like, I don't really care. Yeah, yeah, no. I, didn't <laughs> I was like, uh, so 9:30. You're still watching. You're yeah, still watching this. To uh, I would watch Mad Men of the People, which was Dabney Coleman's uh, yet another failed attempt at a sitcom for Dabney Coleman. Um, Good show. Good show. And in, in 10, I definitely would watch ER. Love. I watched ER for like the first eight seasons every single week. Love I knew it. it was a thing, but I wasn't watching it. Fair enough. Uh, Friday night, the final night of the week. Eight Friday. O'clock. What are you going with? I have four letters. T-G-I-F. That's all I'm doing. I don't need to turn the channel. You're locked into ABC. That's it. TGIF. So 8 o'clock, you're watching Family Matters. Of course. A show that I liked the first two seasons, and by the time it became the Urkel show, absolutely despised. No, love it. See, I, I couldn't stand what it. What is wrong with you? Well, because like, here's the who thing. Who doesn't like Stefan or Cal? That was the worst. That was... What? So here's my problem with it. Now, the show started <laughs> no, as a good blue-collar sitcom about a family. <laughs> this is your thing. You like these uh, these core family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a show about a family. And the, after the end of the first season, the stupid neighbor comes in, and now the show becomes about this nerdy <laughs> black kid and who invents a time machine and a body-swapping machine. Come and on. A, oh, it's just Stephon awful. Stefan Urkel? Oh, but the, here's the other thing about Stefan Urkel that really bothered me. Jaleo White is a nerd. He's a nerdy dude. And so <laughs> he would go on every single TV show he could go on and be like, well, it's a character and I'm not really like that at all. So it's so funny that I'm Urkel because it's totally not like me, which is not true. <laughs> and then he made them make the Stefan Urkel character so that he could be like, this is like the real me. It's oh, he kind forced of it? Yeah. Oh, it still was great. Oh, I was all about Stefan Urkel. This one is the conclusion of a two-parter. Uh, unwilling to go on as Stefan Urkel, yep. Steve is intent on changing back into his old mm-hmm. self, whether it pleases Laura, Laura or, or not. not. And I'm definitely watching this one. Like, I was waiting all week for this. It's like oh. what I'm doing. I'm waiting all week for the conclusion of the Stefan Urkel. I mean, I Drama, understand. Because a part of me wanted Stefan to stay. Right. But a part of me was like, no, nah, man, you got to be Urkel, man. You got to be yourself, so man. so annoying. Urkel was so great. Annoying. I couldn't stand him. Couldn't stand him. Like, I wanted Mr. Winslow to just... And I was him. so glad when he got Myra. I was so happy for him. I was uh, like, yeah, she's dope. She's, she's got better. big boobs. So you're a hater. <laughs> so you're saying, you're saying that Urkel could do better than Laura. I am. That's what you're saying. I am. I'm hating from the opposite side of Jeez. the fence. Jeez, Jeez. fair enough. <laughs> I would have gone with Baywatch. Absolutely Baywatch. I knew it was a thing. Baywatch was a hilarious show. Uh, it's about lifeguards doing stuff. Yeah. And this one, Mitch learns that his captors plan to kill him whether or not he saves Brady. And Stephanie investigates a diving, in quotes, accident involving the fiancé of her sister. That beach was crazy, man. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on at that beach. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> well upset. Uh, so 8.30, you're going with Boy Meets World? Of course. So this episode uh, is a frustrated Corey consults his brother to on his quest to find a date. Let's talk about boy. First of all, Ben will never be Fred. I'm just no, gonna put that Fred's out there. Better. Fred's Fred better. Fred is He's better. Be better. Have you seen Little Monsters? That yes, and together? he was in it. Yeah, and they're both in that. Fred's just better. For some reason, whenever I hear the name Brian. I can't not repeat it in the same way that Ben Savage says, Brian and Little Monsters. Like when he's all grimy, yeah. he goes, Brian. Like anyone's like, oh, my name's Brian. I, it takes every bit of my being to not go, Brian. No I, one would know. I love Little Monsters, and I, I loved Wonder Years. I love, love, love yeah, Wonder Years. Yeah, they're a great show. 
And um, Boy Meets World is not the one to use. I, watched, I think that was my problem with it. Yeah, I watched Boy Meets World because he was kin to Fred, and yeah. out of my respect and love for Fred, yeah, I watched it. And I think a lot of people did, and I don't think Ben gives Fred enough credit for that because I think a lot of people, people our age did. Yeah, I think a lot of people our age were like, "Hey, yeah, you're Fred's little brother. Yeah, I'll we'll give, give you a, a chance. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what you got. Good family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, quality people. And it was it was decent. It was okay. It was I think probably, I liked the younger the younger years. That the older. Oh, it got awful when it was older. Yeah, the when he was trying to like marry seasons, her yeah, and all that garbage. stuff. Garbage. I feel like the young, like with Minkus and yeah, like, yeah. all that stuff going on. Because the last, the, the first three seasons were, were more of a sitcom about a kid. Mm-hmm. And later it became a friend's rip off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a flat yeah. out friend's rip yeah. off. But, and, I, and I really got tired of Sean. Let's just yeah, be honest. Yeah. I was just getting tired of his shit. It's like, you can't get it together, Sean. And, and he's all it's, like, you could tell that actor's like, I know I'm a hard guy. Yeah. But he was a goofy looking kid. And it was always just something with this kid. It was like, come the fuck on, Sean. I will say it was at this time of TGIF was by far the best show in the lineup. Mm-hmm. I would say that that's mm-hmm. without question. Mm-hmm. And even no, as a diehard no. Family Matters fan, you're no, not doing about that. No. 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 I, no. I was going to, but no, because Stefan Arkell's going on right now. Oh, dear. Let's move on to 9.30. <laughs> Let's, uh, 9 o'clock. Let's just move on to 9 o'clock. We're going to have to agree or disagree. Step by step. Yeah, I'm watching it. I, I like Cody. It. Oh, someone told me that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> First of all, Someone I told like me, Cody. In eighth grade, someone told me that I reminded them of Cody. Oh, that's not good. Not good. Uh, JT <laughs> goes on a spending spree JT, I like yep, JT. with his first credit card, and a professor teaches Dana a lesson in humanity. When I like those an English paper. I like Dana. I like Dana. I like Cody. I like JT. I no. like the dad. Dana's the only one I like. I'm into the whole show. Cody living in the van. I like Stacey Keenan. I would have been watching X-Files. There's no question about it. Too scared. Yeah. See, Too I scared. loved it. I loved it. Can this I tell my... Oh. Such a good X-Files episode. Can I, yes. Yeah, I got an X-Files story. All right, so <laughs> I'm freaked out by aliens, period. Yeah. Do you believe it's in aliens? A, I do, but in a weird, I don't know. It's out of like, space, not illegal. Yeah. Okay. And it's, and it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, um. I don't know. I've just always been a kid. I was always scared of aliens. Like, okay. it was always a thing. Did you see those, like, kidnapping specials and think right. they were going to come yep. kidnap people? Exactly. Okay. I saw those, like, dude, they took yeah, me and they stuck yeah. something in my leg. Yeah. And I was like, oh, now, what was that movie with the thing in the eye and that oh, whole yeah. thing? Oh, fire, yeah. Fire uh, in the sky. Yeah. yeah. Freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. I'm petrified of aliens. I'm like, but I'm, like, kind of sometimes trying to sneak and watch, like, X Files when it comes on late, you right, know? Right, right, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, oh. Fox would re air X Files yeah, on like Saturday night 10 at, at 10 or 11. Yeah. So I try to watch it and then like be all freaked out by the music and stuff yeah so i'm like convinced at some point i convinced myself around 12 that aliens have actually abducted me and i you don't thought you'd been abducted listen, by aliens? Okay. i don't but i don't remember but i like would feel this throbbing in my leg which i know is just like blood moving yeah or just but, you know uh growing pains right but yeah. i thought it was a trekker so <laughs> i convinced myself that i'm being tracked by these aliens and i'm like i'm not even really sleeping at night because i'm like oh my god they're gonna come back right. and like do more stuff yeah yeah yeah. and uh my mom used to have these parties and um i had tupperware parties like all my aunts would come over and drink wine oh, okay. and, yeah. you know whatever yeah. and um she came in my room while i was in the bathroom and she looked at my pillow and she found a knife and a hammer under my pillow okay and so she was just like you know who is doing something to you? So my mom is like super protective. She thought someone was touching you. Jumps right to yeah. somebody is touching me. And yeah. she's like, I don't care who it is. It could be like your uncle. Yeah. Even if it's your brother, you tell me which, right now. I love your mom. Yeah, like, which is great. great. Yeah. It's a great parenting. Yeah. Immediately goes to it. Also lets yeah. me know, hey, it doesn't matter who the person yeah. is. It's not you, your fault. It's not, yeah. You just need to be honest. Why would you be sleeping with these things? Like yeah. immediately on it. And she's like, you know, just go. And I'm like, mom, no, nothing, nothing is happening. Yeah. So she's like, well, why do you have these things? Like, she presents them to me. Like, well, what do Look, you have Look, I understand for? the hammer, <laughs> but with the knife. She's like, what's going on with you? And so I proceed to tell her how I think aliens are going to abduct me. Right. And if you could see the disappointment, like, I think she almost wished I was being molested. Because it would be easier to do Because it with. would make, like, yeah. Like well, she's, she probably didn't know what to do with that. Yeah, she was just looking know? at me like, I made you. Like, you yeah. came out of me. But also, I don't, you know, I probably wouldn't have been that it was probably like look if it had been someone's touching me i would have known what to do yeah we'd go to the police we'd but, deal with it right i have a plan if you're like i think aliens have abducted me as a parent she's probably like i don't know how to process that right like, i don't know how to make that better for you right i don't so know she's how to just fix like, it when did you realize that they hadn't well the next day when i woke up my tv was gone she took my tv out of my room in the uh, middle of the night and she left me a note basically saying until i can 
you know, tell the difference between reality and well, I think that's television. Like, so clearly, you got I need that to take TV. a break from the television. For Do you a know while. a specific show that made you think it was that? just a lot of combinations? I mean, it was of big at the things. time. Yeah, it was like, on there would talk be little, shows. Right, yeah. there was talk shows about it, and there'd be yeah. little like little side yeah. specials about oh, yeah. it, and like autopsy and, and History sightings. Channels. Just yeah. like yeah, they've been here seventeen times in the last twenty yeah. years, yeah. and like it was just a lot of stuff. So she took the TV out, and then you go, oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. She takes the TV out, and I'm like, maybe I'm crazy. I gotta watch. Was that the year you took off from Matter 2? <laughs> maybe that's the year. That's the day I gotta take a it break. It was enforced. It was enforced. <laughs> well, there was that alien abduction plot one on Matter 2 Well, X Files that night is a small town is rocked by a series of sudden violent killing sprees by individual residents who are killed by police when they refuse to halt their actions. Uh, William Sanderson is in this, who is a great, uh, great character actor. Uh, and also, adult film actress Ashlyn Gear is in this, who was a huge porno actress in the 80s and 90s. And this was a huge deal. They made a huge deal out of her making a mainstream acting role. Mm. And she actually is a pretty good actress. And she was in one other non-pornographic role, which was a, which was a, uh, a horror movie movie called uh, Creepazoids, mm. which is not a great movie. But I remember at this time when this episode aired, there was like Entertainment Tonight stories and all this stuff about how this woman was going to break through and, and be a legit actress, and then it just never happened. It doesn't never happen. ever happen, really, for Well, me. Tracy Lord's kind of did. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, she's good in this episode. She's very, very good. This is a really great episode of X-Files. No aliens. Mm. Uh, no Sometimes there weren't aliens. Yeah, there was those were easier things. to there was those were easier to deal with. Fair enough. Uh, Pete the dog is yelling at us. So nine thirty, you're going to hang on, Mr. Cooper. Yep. I like that show. I like that show. Mm-hmm. I liked Mark Curry. Um, Holly so, Robinson wait, was watching... my favorite though. Step Did by we skip step. nine? Oh no, step by step. Yeah, yeah. step by steps at nine. Yep, him, Mr. Cooper. Hey, this yep. is when Mark learns that Nicole is doing a fifth grade bully's homework. He wants to teach the kid a lesson, but it's Geneva who ch- closes the book on the subject. I like Geneva. She yeah. didn't take no mess. No, of course not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked Holly Robinson because I was a yeah, big fan of playing with Jones. Yeah, she was cute. Yeah. Uh, I liked Mark Curry. Yeah, yeah, he was a funny stand up. Mm-hmm. He's one of those That's people. That's to say he was a funny stand up. I remember him from stand up. Yeah, I would see him. He would stand out on a yeah. show that I would see him yeah, on. Yeah, I like Mark Absolutely. Curry. So that was good. Well, Sam, we're at the end of our week. Yeah. And as you know, TV Guide is not just informative, it cheers and it jeers, it has opinions. <laughs> So I'm going to read you the cheers and jeers from that week. It is a cheer, it is a jeer-heavy week with mm. three jeers, two chairs this week. I'll read you them and see if you agree or disagree. Okay. So first we have a cheer. Though faintly to a trend we've been fighting for so long that we finally are giving in, movies based on TV series. And then goes on to talk about how great the Brady Bunch movie is mm-hmm. and Sergeant Bilko. And I can go with that. Mm-hmm. The Brady Bunch movie is great. Yeah. You said you enjoyed Bilko. I like Sergeant Bilko. Maybe because I never saw the original. The original is amazing. So it was, just, it was, it was great and funny too. Me. Yeah, McKill's Navy. Uh, jeers to a group called Viewers Against the Nanny. Oh, come on, the nanny? Sure, Fran Drescher's Queen's Bray may make the screech of a subway train. Why have a bunch of Drescher dishers? People hated the nanny. Yeah. I didn't get into the nanny until it was in syndication, but yeah. I liked it. I don't know. I could, that uphold, that right. I could uphold that jeer. I like the parents. Uh, jeers to King World for its Ted Turner-like plans to colorize the 71 episodes of The Little Rascals. I don't really mm. like the little rascals, and I, I kind of don't care. Yeah, that's like, who cares? Yeah. I don't even think that needed to be written about. Then we have uh, Cheers to MTV for paying some medical expenses and hospital expenses of uninsured real-world cast member Pedro Zamora. Well, that's just the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and then NBC, uh, they paid for a, a, a stagehand got killed on the Today Show. Mm. Uh, he was actually killed by the guy who beat up um, uh, Tom Brokaw when was saying, what's the... Frequency count. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. same guy Whoa. killed this dude. And uh, NBC paid for all this stuff. And finally, jeers to Rush Limbaugh for demanding an apology from She TV for lampooning him. What's She TV? She TV was a sketch comedy <laughs> show. Uh, it was all women. Oh, uh, I think it was I don't on Fox. That. It, it was an okay sketch show. I don't remember that. Yeah, they, they made fun of Rush Limbaugh. So who cares? Yeah, I don't care about Shut that. up, Rush Limbaugh. Well, Sam. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing the show. This was fun. We did it. It would happen. It was great. Sam J. She may or may not be possessed by the devil and may or may not have been abducted. 
by aliens. The world will never know. She is very funny. As always, I will put all of her social media links up on tvguidancecounselor.com, and you can reach me there. You can reach me at tvguidancecounselor at gmail.com or canadaicanread.com, and you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. I love hearing from you guys, and we'll see you again next Wednesday for an all-new episode of TV Guidance Counselor. I wasn't Catholic, which was a big deal. One point they told my mother I was possessed by the devil. Really? Two really? nuns held me, and the other one tried to like put it in my mouth. Oh, I'd be cool as hell to be yeah. like Zach Morris. Or, Why are you disappointed in me? And yeah. you just don't want your daughter to get screwed.